in this lesson and we'll work on uh, the way to conjugate uh, les verbes réguliers, so the regular verbs of the first group, okay, and then with a air, so let's start now. So let's take an example. The example is parler, parler is to speak or to talk, okay, and then if you have a look at it like that, you can basically divide this verb in two parts. The first part, parle, and then second part, a air. So it does mean that this verb, ending with a air, is belonging to the first group of verbs. In French, we've got three groups, okay? The two first are uh, regular, and the last one, the third one, is uh, irregular. So this is one verb ending with a air. It does mean that it belongs to the, the first group, and it won't be tricky or so difficult to conjugate. So we'll see together how to conjugate this verb. The first person like je here, so you will put this parle again, so remember, and after that you just put the ending e. And then the way to pronounce it is je parle. Parle. So remember we put it, okay, but then we don't really pronounce it. Je parle, okay? Then for tu, you will have to put es, okay? Phonetically, tu parles. So you've got the two first forms, you pronounce them the same way. You write them differently, of course, because you've got a here, and then you've got a and s, okay? But then phonetically, they are the same. Je parle, tu parles. Okay, so let's see what you'll get for il and elle. And well, as you see, you get il parle, elle parle. So it's the same form here. So if you really want to only only speak and only use orally the, the, the language, well, it's, it's quite easy to conjugate these verbs. Je parle, tu parles, il parle, elle parle. Okay, for nous, Okay, we'll have, well, let's say the classical ending for a new, and it will be O-N-S. Classical, because you, you will see that with the other groups as well, it's quite common to have this O-N-S for new, okay? Nous parlons, okay? Remember, final S is not pronounced, okay? And then this O-N together, they will give you the sound on, on, okay? Nous parlons, nous parlons. All right, let's see now for vous, vous, parlez. Okay, remember, a Z, when you combine them together, you get the sound E, vous, parlez. All right, and the last one. So even if you've got this E, N, T, well, don't hate me, but you won't pronounce these letters. Okay, you have to write them for the plural form, but you don't pronounce them. So you get il parle, elle parle. So the good news is that you've got here, je parle, tu parles, il, elle parle, and then if you check it here, il, elle parle. So it's the same phonetical pronunciation or phonetical form, sorry. Okay? And then you've got nous parlons, and then vous parlez. All right? So here, remember the endings. You will have to write them, okay? All right, so we'll take another example. Regarder is to watch, okay? So you can see that the verb is ending with a air, okay? So you take it, you just take this a air away and then you keep this radical form, like we say in, in French, only this form, okay? So you will get je regarde, tu regardes, il regarde, elle regarde, nous regardons, vous regardez, il regarde, elle regarde. Okay, so one more time here. Regarde, 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 and then regarde. So phonetically, only one form here, and then regardons, regardez. All right? Remember that even if this beautiful verb aller that we tend to use quite often because it means to go, okay, even if it ends with a er, it is not regular at all.
This lesson will see how to conjugate the verbs ending with ER. So not all the ER verbs are belonging to the second group, but some of them. And then we'll see how to conjugate them at the present form. Okay, so we'll take an example. The example is finir. So finir means to finish. Okay, and then you can see that it's ending with ER. All right, so we'll do it like that. We'll divide it into so F E N and then we take away this E R ending, all right, and we'll just keep this form here F E N to construct the present. So you take it and you put it here, and after that you will add this ending. So for je it will be E S. Je fini. Remember, final S is not pronounced. Je Fini. Okay. Tu fini. So ES as well, like we had for je. So same way to pronounce it as well. You don't pronounce the final S. Tu fini. Il, elle fini. So IT. Final T not pronounced. Il, elle fini. So je fini. Tu fini, il fini. Phonetically, it's exactly the same form for these persons. Okay? So it's quite good if you want only to talk and not to write. So just focus on this fini form. You know that it's for je, tu, and il, elle. Okay? But then for nous, so have a look. Nous finissons. Okay? E-S-S-O-N-S. -S -S. sont. Nous finissons. Finissons. Okay, final S not pronounced. Nous finissons. Vous finissez. Vous finissez. Okay, a Z at the end gives you the, the sound E. Okay, finissez. Finissez. Vous finissez. Ils finissent. So remember, as usual, when we've got the verbs E and T not pronounced. Il Finis, elle finis. All right. So let's see them one more time. Je finis, tu finis, il finit, elle finit, nous finissons, vous finissez, ils finissent, elles finissent. All right. Let's take another example. Unir, to unite. Okay. Same rule. We just keep this un and then you spot the ending, you take it away, and you will keep the UN to construct. So, juni, same way. Tu uni, il uni, elle uni. Nous unissons, vous unissez, ils unissent, elles unissent. Okay, so it's the same, exactly the same. So, same group, same way to uh, conjugate it, okay. Let's take choisir, third example, you spot it, ending with ER here. Choisir means to, ch to choose, okay, then same way. Je choisis, tu choisis, il choisit, elle choisit, nous choisissons, vous choisissez, ils choisissent, elles choisissent. Le présent. Continue. So the present continue, it's an uh, interesting structure because it's uh, the kind of structure that you can use if you want to insist on the fact that an action or something, a process is continuing at the time when you are uh, speaking or talking. Okay. And the way to construct this is to use first this expression, être en train de. So you can see that here we've got the verb être, to be. Okay, and this structure should be obviously at the present time. Okay, and the pr no, not the present time, sorry, but the present tense. All right, so you should conjugate your verb être here at the present. Okay, then you will put the verb that you want to use in your structure. This verb should be at the infinitive form, so the basic form of the verb. Okay, so and it will give you this present continue. Okay, so let's see a few examples. First, je suis en train de faire mes devoirs. 
Okay, there is to do, and then mes devoirs, my homework, all right? And then when you, when you use this, je suis en train de, okay? So you want to insist on the fact that at the time when you are talking, the, the, the process is taking place, okay? And it, it continues, and that's the whole concept of it. So, je suis en train de faire mes devoirs, all right? Second example that we've got, so same thing here. Tu es en train de regarder un film. Okay, so same thing, regarder or to watch a film, a movie. So the action is taking place and of course it continues if you use this en train de. Okay, but then remember that you've got to put here the verb être at the present form for tu, tu es. Okay, so you need to conjugate it. And then, elle est en train de Réparer, so to repair, son vélo, her bike. Elle est en train de réparer son vélo. All right, so same thing. It's continuing, it's taking place at the time when you are talking. And the last one. Il est en train de préparer le petit déjeuner. Préparer, to prepare, le petit déjeuner, breakfast. Okay, so il est en train de préparer le petit déjeuner. Okay, so at the time when you are talking, he's doing it right now, and the process is continuing. Okay, so let's read them one more time. Je suis en train de faire mes devoirs. Tu es en train de regarder un film. Elle est en train de réparer son vélo. Il est en train de préparer le petit déjeuner. Okay, so that's what we call le présent continu. But then, if you think about that... Well, it would be possible to transpose that at the past as well. Why not? So, let's call it le passé continu. And it's possible because, well, the idea is that you just use the same, same structure, être en train de, okay? But think about that because we've been covering the past tenses already and it would be a bit strange to use this passé composé tense because normally we tend to use this passé composé when we want to express actions, okay? But then, in that case, imparfait would be more appropriate, okay? So if you want to use this passé continu concept, then use être en train de, and you use this imparfait, okay? Then, same idea, you put your verb at the infinitive form, and you will get this passé continu. Okay, so you know what? We'll take exactly the same sentences that we had uh, as examples for the, the present, but we we'll just put them at the passé. And here we go. J'étais en train de faire mes devoirs. So as you can see, the only thing that will change in this structure is être, okay? Because in that case, you should put it at the imparfait form. J'étais en train de faire mes devoirs. Tu étais en train de regarder un film. Elle était en train de réparer son vélo. Il était en train de préparer le petit déjeuner. All right. So, the only thing that will change here, here and here, it's the verb être that you should put at the imparfait form. All right. And in the same logic, we could put this structure at the future as well. Why not? So, le futur continue. And in that case, exactly the same structure, so être en train de, but then obviously, so être should be at the future form, okay, so the real one, and then the infinitive form just to get this futur continue. Okay, same example, same sentences, so je serai en train de faire mes devoirs. Tu seras en train de regarder un film. Elle sera en train de réparer son vélo. Il sera en train de préparer le petit déjeuner. Okay, so as you can see, the only thing that will change here is the verb être. So it should be at the future, future simple form, so the real future. Okay, here, here, and here. Okay, l'impératif. Okay, so as usual, when we see a tense, we first work on 
l'emploi, so when do we use it, and then after that we'll see la formation, so how do we construct this imperative form, okay? But then first, of course, l'emploi. So, when do we use the imperative? Well, it's quite simple, we've got three main uses of l'imperative. The first one, le conseil. So if you want to translate conseil, it would be advice, okay? So if you want to give an advice to someone, okay, in most of the cases you will use this imperative form. Or then if you want to give an order, okay? So normally that's the tense we use if we want to use this order thing. And then uh, la défense, so if you want to forbid something to someone, okay? So in that case you should use l'imperative, okay? So conseil, ordre ou défense. Okay, we'll see just a few examples just to see how it works. Le conseil, so we've got this example. Pour aller à la gare, tourner à gauche et continuer tout droit. Okay, so to go to the station, aller is to go, la gare, the station, pour aller à la gare, tourner, and that's our first imperative, à gauche, on your left, et continuer, continue is to continue, to draw straight. Okay, so tourner and continuer here are at the imperative form. Okay, normally at this level maybe it rings a bell and maybe you can uh, think that they look like something we saw previously. Okay, so ordre now if you want to give an order, same thing here. Uh, Faites devoir. Okay, so faire is to give. Uh, sorry, to do, sorry, <laughs> and then te devoir, your homework, okay, we tend to put that at the plural form in French. Fais tes devoirs, okay, and this is here as well an imperatif, okay, and then let's see now, une défense, n'utilisez pas votre téléphone portable pendant le cours, so of course, in that case, défense, you want to forbid something, so you should use this uh, negative form, okay? So, n'utilisez pas votre téléphone portable pendant, during, le cours, the lesson, okay? Utiliser is to use. N'utilisez pas votre téléphone portable pendant le cours, same thing here. Utiliser is at the imperative form, okay? So, now, first thing. The, when we talk about this uh, imperative form, the, the, the first thing that you get to remember is that we've got only three persons, so they will be tu, nous, and then vous. So the imperative doesn't exist for je, for il and il au pluriel. Okay? And then the second thing that you should remember is that you won't use these pronoms personnels. So normally when we've got a tense, uh, well so far all the tenses that we saw, you use these pronoms personnels, so tu, nous, and vous, okay? The concept with the imperative is that you won't use tu, either nous, or vous, okay? So you don't use this pronom personnel, all right? So these two things are the main thing. First, only three persons, tu, nous, and vous, and the second thing, you don't use the pronom personnel. Okay, let's see now how we build this imperative form. So, we'll see first the premier group, then we'll see the deuxième group, and then the troisième group, and finally, of course, as usual, the irregular verbs. Alright, so let's start with the first group, le premier group. So, normally, the first group, and it's it's been that way so far, is the easy group because uh, it is regular. In that case for the imperative, well, it will be the tricky group, okay? Because for instance, at the present form, we've got tu parles, okay? So that's the present form of the verb parler, parler to talk from the, f from, from the first group, okay? If we want to make this imperative form, well, it will look like that, parle. So you can see that your final S needs to go away and you will get this parle form. This is your imperative form, so l'imperatif. And then don't forget to put le point d'exclamation here because whether it's an order or an advice, you should put it.
Okay, that's the way it goes. And then remember, we don't put the pronoun personnel. So just this form. Okay, so that's the first form of parler at the imperative. Then, nous parlons. So this is the present form. Okay, well, it's quite easy. You don't touch it. You don't change anything. You just put it back here. Don't put the pronoun personnel, of course. Just put this point d'exclamation at the end. And you've got your imperative form, so parlons, okay? And then, vous parlez, well, same thing here, you just keep it like it is at the present form, and you just put your point d'exclamation at the end. So, what you need to remember is that the only thing that will change, so between the present form here and this imperative form, is this final S that normally we don't pronounce, but still we write it. Okay, so it needs to go away at the imperative for the to form. Okay, let's see now verbs from the second group. So I took this uh, finir, finir to end, to finish. Okay, so to fini at the present form and have a look, it's exactly the same form. Fini, okay, point d'exclamation and you take away the pronoun personnel. All right, then. Nous finissons, exactly the same form, finissons, don't forget the point d'exclamation at the end, and you take away this nous. Vous finissez, and you will get finissez, okay? So, what you've got to remember, second group of verbs, actually, they will be exactly the same as uh, at the present form, okay? So, no change. Of course, you need to take away the pronoun personnel, but the forms will stay the same. Okay, so let's see now the troisième group. So normally, in most of the cases, troisième group is the contain all the tricky verbs. Okay, uh, but then if you take the example of prendre, prendre is to take. Tu prends at the present form. Okay, well, look, it is exactly the same thing. Keep in mind that, of course, you should put this point d'interrogation at the end. Uh, sorry, point d'exclamation at the end, and then you take you take away this pronoun personnel, but still, it's the same form, all right? Then, nous prenons, at the present form, we'll get this pronoun. And the last one, vous prenez, you will get prenez, okay? So, third group of verbs, actually, it's quite easy because you don't touch anything, you don't change anything, you just take away this pronoun personnel, and you will have your imperative form, okay? Of course, as usual in French, we've got some irregular verbs, okay? So, the first one will be aller, okay? So, aller will be like that. So, the only thing that will change with aller is, well, what we saw in the first group, the final S will go away. So, you get va, allons, aller. Okay, the other forms are exactly the same. Savoir will become sach, sachons, sachez. Ouvrir, ouvre, so the S goes away, ouvrons, ouvrez. Okay, allez to go, savoir to know, ouvrir to open. Okay, then of course, être and avoir, so être will become soi, remember final S is not pronounced, soi, then soyons, soyez, all right, soi, soyons, soyez, and avoir will become E, remember the final E is not pronounced, so you only have this AE sound, E, okay, E, ayons, Ayez. Okay? A, ayons, ayez. Okay, so one more time. Soi, soyons, soyez. Then, a, ayons, ayez. All right? And now, remember that all these tricky verbs will be modified if you put a pronoun after. Okay, and we're talking about only two categories of pronouns. So we saw the pronouns previously, so you should know now <laughs> what pronouns I'm talking about. So I'm talking about 
this pronoun i here, so the y pronoun, and I'm talking about the pronoun en, okay? So because in most of the, well, not most of the cases, but quite often in, in French, when we use the imperative, we tend to avoid repeating things, so uh, we will put uh, pronouns if needed and if possible, okay? So in that case, for instance, remember, pense, so it's from the first group, so normally when you put this imperative, you shouldn't put the s, okay? But then if you put this y, so this pronoun after, then you will have to put back this s, just to produce it orally, because you will pronounce it pense-zi, pense-zi, okay? Pense-zi. All right, so you get to make this liaison. Same thing here, vas-y, vas-y, all right, and then achète-en, achète-en, all right. So that's one important thing if you want to construct this imperative form with pronouns. Then now we'll see how to construct this imperative when we've got the negative form. After that, we'll see how it works if you've got only one pronoun and pronoun complément, and then one or two in that case. And then uh, finally, we'll see with the verb pronomino. But then now first, la négation. So I took this parler verb, and if you have a look at it, so imperatif is Parle, okay, if you want to write the same sentence but at the negative form, well, it's quite easy because it will be ne parle pas, okay, so you just put your ne before the verb and then the pas after the verb, and of course, you don't change the, the rest. Finir, finissons, ne finissons pas, okay, so same concept, ne first, then your verb, and after that, pas, and then mettre, mettez, will become ne mettez pas. Okay, so it's not that difficult. Now let's see with the pronouns. Okay, and then first part will be with one pronoun and after that we'll see how to construct that with two pronouns and it is a bit difficult if I'm totally honest with you. But now with one pronoun, let's see, regarde-moi. Okay, and it will become at the negative form ne me regarde pas. Okay, so here normally remember these pronouns me, okay, should come before the verb. Then the rule at the imperative is that if you've got these structures, so structure affirmative, okay, so it's not the negative form, then they should come after. And then this me is one of the pronouns that will change and it will become moi. Regarde moi, okay? But when you put back this structure to the negative form, so me just become the normal form, so ne me regarde pas, all right? Same thing, so toi will be the second and the last to be uh, drastically modified, so it will become regarde toi, okay? So the rules stay the same, you put it after, okay? Regarde toi. All right, but then when you put the negative form, well, it becomes normal, so ne, and then te regarde pas. Okay, keep in mind that, as usual for the pronouns, they will come before the verb, okay? So your negative form is coming before and after the whole thing. And then, well, if you've got this le pronoun, or it could be the la, well, it will... It will stay the same, so no modification, so regarde-le, and then negative form, ne le regarde pas. Okay? Regarde-la, ne la regarde pas. It could be regarde-nous, okay? Ne, whoops, sorry, sorry, I made a mistake, it should be nous here, ne nous regarde pas. Okay? And the last one, regarde-les, will become ne les regarde pas. Okay, so keep in mind that it's only this me and te pronouns that will change. They will become this moi and toi. So they will become these forms and you should put each time anyway after the verb. And don't forget this little thing between the two because as you can see, we've got to put it. Okay, now if you want to put two 
pronounce in your structure with the imperatif? Well, it's something that's, uh, well, it's not really rare to, to use that, okay? But then, well, we've got some, of course, as usual points, strict rules. And that's the thing. The first part that you will have will be me or m apostrophe, te or t apostrophe, lui, then nous, and leur. Okay, so that will be the first thing that you will have to put, and after that will come your pronoun en. Okay, that's normally the the the, the association of pronouns that we've got. Okay, so let's see them in action. For instance, parlement. Okay, so as you see, first you put this m apostrophe, and then you put your pronoun. Okay, don't forget that they must come after your verb because it's the imperative parlement okay but if you put them at the negative form then you will get ne m'en parle pas okay remember negative form then they come back as they should be all the time so before the verb all right so another example parle nous en okay here and then we will get ne nous en parle pas. Okay, sorry for the examples, but I, I tend to not to make the liaison when I make these little examples, just because I think it's more clear not to make the liaison. Okay, but then of course, parle nous en, ne nous en parle pas should be the, the way you should pronounce them. Okay, but still, just to make it clear where you put them and to avoid any mistake or anything like that. Okay, so same thing here, so parle, and then after that you've got your pronoun, and second pronoun, en. But when you put the negative form, ne, and then you put them back before your verb. Okay? Uh, second possibility that you would have would be the pronouns like le, la, and le. Okay? And they will come first, and after that you will have this moi, lui, nous, and leur. Okay? Let's see a few examples now. Donne la moi. Okay? Donne la moi. So exactly the same rule as we saw previously. Okay? So you put them after your verb, like that. Okay? But of course, when you put the negative form, then you put them back. Look. Ne, me, la, Donne pas. Donne la moi, ne me la donne pas. Then, donne la nous. And it will become, ne nous la donne pas. Alright, so I know this is really difficult, so don't worry, because many students have some difficulties at the beginning, okay, but then little by little, you will understand the structure and the way to construct that okay just try to keep that in mind okay try to listen to persons and then try to use this structure but remember that in many cases it's possible to avoid repeating or to avoid sorry using the, the pronouns by repeating a few words okay so it's well it's an option as well okay so let's see now les, les verbes pronominaux okay and so I took this uh, se regarder verb, okay, so regarde-toi, and then you put, if you put the, the same structure, but then uh, at the negative form, so ne te regarde pas, regardons-nous, ne nous regardons pas, regardez-vous, ne vous regardez pas, okay, so exactly the same thing as we saw previously, so toi, nous, and vous should come after the verb, Okay, but when you put this structure at the negative form, so te, nous, and vous should come before the verb. Okay, so that's the rule. Le futur proche, so basically if you want to translate it directly, it would be the near future. So what is le futur proche exactly? It's the possibility that we have in French and in other languages to construct basically a future with Aller at the present form, followed by the infinitive, so the basic form of the verb. 
Okay, so like in English, you would say, I am going to travel, for instance. In French, we would say, je vais voyager. Okay, so remember, first, aller, that you conjugate at the present form, and then you will put your verb at the infinitive form. Okay, so first, of course, we did introduce the verb aller and the way to conjugate it, but still, I think that it is really important to see how it goes. So, we will see one more time the conjugation of aller at the present form. Okay, first person here, je vais. Remember, final S not pronounced. Je vais. Okay, tu vas. Same thing here, final S not pronounced. Tu vas. Il Elle va. Nous allons. Final S not pronounced. And then when you get this O-N combination, you get this nasal on, really in your nose, okay? On. And then let's make this little liaison here to make it sound more beautiful. Nous allons. Nous allons. Okay? Same thing here. Vous allez. Vous allez. All right. Remember, classic ending for vous, a Z, okay? But then when you combine these two letters, you get the sound E, okay? Allez, and then vous allez. All right. And the last persons, ils, elles vont. Ils vont, elles vont. Okay, remember, final T, not pronounced, so you get this O, N, nasal here. On, vont. Okay, so let's see them one more time. Je vais, tu vas, il va, elle va, nous allons, vous allez, ils vont, elles vont. Okay, so that's the first part that we'll, we will use to construct this uh, future proche, okay? And then the second part will be, well, the verb that you want to express, but at the infinitive form. So I've been writing few examples here. So the first sentence, je vais voyager, voyager means to travel, avec, with, ma famille, my family. Je vais voyager avec ma famille. Famille. Okay? So, quite simple way to construct a future form. Tu vas chercher, chercher means to search, une nouvelle maison. Okay? Une nouvelle, nouvelle, it's the feminine form of the adjective nouveau, new. Okay, because maison, house, as you can see here, is feminine. So, une nouvelle maison, a new house. Tu vas chercher une nouvelle maison. Okay, and then, il, elle, va partir, partir is to leave. Okay, pour, pour means for, pour, un, En. One year. Un an. Okay? So I will make the liaison just to to make it more more uh, normal after. Okay, but I just want to divide here. Un an. Okay? So let's read it normally now. Il va partir pour un an. Okay? So you can hear that now I make this link between the two. Un an. Un an. So no break between the two. Un an. Okay? Il va partir pour un an. Elle va partir pour un an. Okay? Then for nous. Nous allons chanter. Chanter means to sing. Okay? Sept chansons. So remember, sept, feminine form of ce, this. Okay? Chanson, song. And as chanson is feminine, so you should put this, this form here at the feminine. This. Okay? Nous allons chanter cette chanson. Nous allons chanter cette chanson. Mm -hmm. And then for vous, vous allez adorer, so adorer to adore, to love, a lot, 
ce film, okay? Ce, so you see now this, okay? But then it's the masculine form because film, film here is masculine. Ce film, this movie, okay? Vous allez adorer ce film. Vous allez adorer ce film. And the last one. Ils vont boire, boire is to drink, un café, a coffee. Ils vont boire un café. Elles vont boire un café. Okay, so let's repeat everything again. Je vais voyager avec ma famille. Tu vas chercher une nouvelle maison. Il va partir pour un an. Elle va partir pour un an. Nous allons chanter cette chanson. Vous allez adorer ce film. Ils vont boire un café. Elles vont boire un café. Le passé récent. Like the recent past, if you want to translate it directly. So, le passé récent is a, like a false or a fake tense that we've got. Because technically it's the present tense, but then if you want to express something that you just did, okay? So we've got a tense for that, and it's quite useful and quite easy to make, because the concept is that first you will use the verb venir and the preposition de, okay? So venir is to come, venir de, so this should be at the present tense. And then you will put your verb at the infinitive form, okay? And you will get what we call le passé récent. Okay, so it's a technique just to express something yet that you just did, okay? Uh, so it's not possible to use this passé récent, of course, for last week or uh, uh, the month before. It's not possible, okay? So it's really something that is somehow connected to the present. So present, something that you just did, okay? So of course, if you want to make it, you should know the conjugation of venir by heart. If that's not the case, then don't worry. Here it comes. So at the present tense, it's je viens, tu viens, il vient, elle vient, nous venons, vous venez, ils viennent, elles viennent. All right, so let's see that one more time. Je viens. Final S not pronounced, okay? And when you combine this EON, you get this YEN, YEN. Je viens, all right? Tu viens, well, exactly the same thing. Final S not pronounced, and then you get this YEN sound, all right? Then il vient, exactly the same sound, because final T here is not pronounced. Elle vient, all right? Nous venons, okay? So final S not pronounced, and then remember that you pronounce this E uh, like a the, venons, okay, O-N in your nose, on, venons, nous venons, all right, vous venez, okay, so a Z at the end combined will give you the sound A, and here you get a, venez, vous venez, all right, and then il viennent, so remember as usual in French when we talk about conjugation, E and T at the end, you don't pronounce it here. And then you've got this E uh, here, followed by this double N. So double consonant here, so when they are identical, they will open the sound of this E. Uh. So you will get it, and it will be produced like E, okay? So vien, vien, okay? Don't insist on this N, no, vien. Vien, okay? Ils viennent, elles viennent. All right? So remember, je viens, tu viens, il vient, elle vient. Nous venons, vous venez, ils viennent, elles viennent. So this is the first part that you should use to make this passé récent. Okay? And remember, after that, you put this preposition de plus your verb at the infinitive. So let's see a few examples now. And the first one, je viens de discuter avec ma sœur. Okay? Discuter, to discuss, avec, with, my sister, ma sœur. 
je viens de discuter avec ma sœur. Okay? Something that just happened. All right? And then same thing here. Tu viens de boire un verre de lait. Un, uh, sorry, boire to drink. Un verre glace de lait of milk. D'accord Tu viens de boire un verre de lait. Same thing here. It just happened. Elle vient de gagner le match. Gagner is to win. Le match, obviously, the match. Elle vient de gagner le match. And the last one. Nous venons de déjeuner. OK? Déjeuner here. When you have your lunch, OK? Nous venons de déjeuner. All right? So, je viens de discuter avec ma sœur. Tu viens de boire un verre de lait. Elle vient de gagner le match. Nous venons de déjeuner. All right? So, keep in mind, venir, at the present form, as we see here, and then the preposition, la préposition de, and your verb at the infinitive form. And then you get this passé récent, something that you just did. Okay? Futur simple so basically it's the future tense okay when you want to express something that you will do let's see how we will make it in french so we'll see the difference between the three uh, sorry the three groups of verbs that we've got in french the first one first group is ending with a air remember parler to talk to speak so the idea is that in that case for this group You don't change anything, so you just keep the basic form, the infinitive form, all right? And after that, you will put at the end a e for je. Okay, so this will be your ending. So you just don't touch the verb, I mean, don't touch the infinitive form, you just put at the end this ending, okay? Second group of verbs, finir, to finish, to end. Well, the good news is that it will behave the same way as for the first group of verbs. You don't modify anything. You just keep your infinitive form and you will put the ending AI here as well. So you get je parlerai and then you will get je finirai. So it's not that difficult for these to first group, okay? The third group, it's a bit more tricky, of course, as usual, because we're talking about irregular verbs, okay? But still, I took this lire. Lire is to read, okay? And then you can see that it's ending with this e, uh, so the vowel e, uh, okay? As usual, what we'll do, we'll take this e uh, away. So we get now l i r, and after that, we just put the ending, je, Lire. All right? So it will apply for most of the verbs. Of course, because it's French language, it's not all the verbs. We've got exceptions, but we'll see the exceptions a bit later in this lesson. But still, that's the, that's the idea of uh, constructed it. If it's ending with this uh, vowel, take it away. All right? You get that. And after that, you just put the ending. All right? So let's see. The ending for je will be a e all right and you pronounce it a remember open a okay the ending for tu will be a s you don't pronounce the s so you pronounce a all right the ending for il l will be a okay phonetically exactly the same thing as for tu okay a a the ending for nous will be O N S as usual, okay? Remember, you don't pronounce the final S, you get the on sound. Okay? Nasal in your nose, on, on. All right? The ending for vous will be as usual a Z, but then you pronounce it e. Okay? And then the ending for il l will be O N T. You don't pronounce the final T, so you get the nasal on. All right? So e a, A, on, E, on. Okay? So let's see how it will go with parler, parler, to speak, to talk. Okay? Je parlerai. Tu parleras. 
Il parlera, elle parlera. Nous parlerons, vous parlerez. Ils parleront, elles parleront. All right. So as I said, just keep your basic form and just put your endings. Okay. E, A, A, on, E, on. That's it. Let's see now. Choisir, to choose. Second group of verbs. Je choisirai. Tu choisiras. Il choisira. Elle choisira. Nous choisirons. Vous choisirez. Ils choisiront. Elles choisiront. Same thing, remember, just keep the infinitive form, the basic form, and just, just put your endings at the end. <laughs> et, a, a, on, et, on. Okay? Let's see now. Écrire, écrire is to write. Okay, so third group, but then remember, as we saw with lire, lire, we took away this final e, uh, okay? And only with the first part, we just add after that the endings. So, j'écrirai, tu écriras, il écrira, elle écrira, nous écrirons, vous écrirez, ils écriront, elles écriront. All right? So, it's not that difficult. Okay, as I said, you take away the E, uh, and after that, E, A, A, ON, E, ON. All right? So, of course, we've got some exceptions, as I said. The first one is être. Être will become sœur. So, the important thing with the future simple is that the verb will change, but the endings will be the same. Okay, so the endings we saw previously will be exactly the same. Okay, so the only thing that you've got to remember is that être will become sœur. So that's the part that you will first, you will have to put, and then you will combine it with the ending, and it will become je serai. Okay, remember, ending for je was ai, je serai. Okay, avoir is becoming or. Okay, so tu auras. Aller will become ir. Il ira, elle ira. Faire will become fer, F-E-R. So you will get nous ferons. Savoir will become sort, S-A-U-R. Vous saurez. Voir will become ver, ils verront, elles verront. All right, so remember, être is becoming sœur, avoir becomes or, aller, ir, faire, fer, savoir, sort, voir, ver. Okay, but then after all these forms, you will just put the normal endings that we saw previously. So, a, i for je, a, s for a, a, o, n, s, e, z, o, n, t. Other exceptions? Pouvoir will become pour. Je pourrais. Vouloir, voudre. Tu voudras. Pleuvoir, pleuvre. Il pleuvra. Devoir, d'œuvre. Nous devrons. Venir, viendre. Vous viendrez. Courir, cours. Il, elle, Okay, so pouvoir is becoming pour, and it, mean, it means can. Vouloir, voudre, to want. Pleuvoir, to rain, pleuvre. Devoir, to have to, 
d'œuvre. Venir, to come, viendre. Courir, to run, cours. Ok And then, as we saw previously, you only add after the endings. Alright So, remember one more time. Je, ending for je, is AI. Tu, ending for tu, is AS. Il, elle, A. Nous, ONS. Vous, EZ. Il, elle, ONT. Ok So, E, A, A, ON, E, ON. Le conditionnel présent. So basically the conditionnel is, as in English, this conditional form. So would, could, okay? But of course, as in English, we've got different tenses for that. And the first one that we will see, so the more classic tense that we us usually use, sorry, when we talk about the conditionnel, it's the present form. Okay, so let's start now. Le conditionnel présent. So in this lesson, we'll see first... La formation, so the way to build it, to make it, and then, of course, l'emploi, so when you should use this conditionnel present form, okay? So let's first start, if that's okay with you, with the formation, the way to make it. So you'll see that it's quite easy, in a way, and normally that's the reason why we introduce it right after the future tense, so if you didn't see the video regarding the future tense, I definitely advise you to do it because uh, it will be more clear for you. So it's unit six. I don't remember the lesson, but check unit six, unit six, sorry, and then the future and you'll find it. Okay, because the way we construct this conditionnel présent is the same way that we construct the future. Okay, the only difference will be the endings. All right, so let's take... The first example that we've got here, parler, belongs to the first group of verbs. Remember, we've got three in French. And the first group of verb is ending with a air, like here. Okay, so these verbs are regular. So that's a good news, and normally that's the reason why we start with them. Uh, so you don't have to change your verb. So parler is like that. You will keep it like that and based on this form after that you will add the endings okay and for je the ending will be a e s okay so you don't need to modify your infinitive form the basic form is like that it goes there and right after you just add the ending a e s and you get je parlerai all right so it's quite simple. Second group, so verbs ending with ER. Be careful, not all the verbs ending with ER, but a quite decent amount of them <laughs> belongs to the second group. But then still, it will be quite easy because it is exactly the same way. You don't modify your infinitive form. You just keep it like that, all right? And after that, you add your ending. Je finirai. So, A, I, S. Je finirai. All right, so it's quite easy. You keep your basic form, your infinitive form, and right after, you just put the ending. Okay? For the third group of verbs, so, of course, we will have some exceptions. So, we'll see that a bit later in this lesson. But still, the main rule is if it's ending like lire, lire to read, okay, uh, with this e, uh, well, the idea is that you will take this e uh, away, as we quite usually do in French, okay, and after that, you will add your ending. Je lirai. All right, so the rule goes like, if you've got final e, uh, then you take it away, You've got your form here, L-I-R, and then you add your ending, A-I-S, je lirai. Okay, so you've got three forms here, and they're actually the, well, conditional, présent forms. Je parlerai, je finirai, je lirai. Okay, parler is to talk or to speak, finir, to finish or to end, lire, to read. 
Okay, so the endings now. So we saw that previously that, well, the ending for je will be, whoops, sorry, the ending for je will be a, e, s. Okay, the ending for tu will be, well, the same, a, e, s. The ending for il, l will be a, e, t. Okay, the good news is that even if we write them differently, like you see here, we pronounce them the same way. And it goes like E, E, E. All right? So as usual in French, what you pronounce, well, it's not that difficult in a way, but then remember how to write them. A, I, S for je, A, I, S for tu, A, I, T for il, elle. So now let's see nous, and nous goes like E-O-N-S, okay, and it should be pronounced ion, remember, final S is not pronounced, ion, okay, then for vous it goes like E-Z, and it goes like ye, okay, remember when you get this E before it goes like ye, 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 okay, ye, so that's the reason why we had this ion here, and then ye. All right, and the last one. So even if it looks <laughs> scary, because you've got three vowels here and then nt, okay, a e e n t. So as usual, that's the way you should write it. But then phonetically, the good news is that you pronounce it e. So the the same way that we had here, e, e here, e, and then e. Okay, so let's pronounce them, e, e, e. Yon, ye, e. So if you look carefully, you've got only three phonetical pronunciation. The first one is here and here. It's the same. So it's e. After that, we've got this yon. And after that, after that we've got this ye. All right. So let's see now for parler. Parler, it's to speak or to talk. Okay, so je parlerai. Tu parlerais, il parlerait, elle parlerait, nous parlerions, vous parleriez, il parlerait, elle parlerait. Second example, choisir from the second group of verbs, choisir is to choose. Je choisirais, tu choisirais, il choisirait, elle choisirait, nous choisirions. Vous choisiriez, il choisirait, elle choisirait. Okay, not that difficult. And the last example, so for the third group, it's écrire. Écrire is to write. Okay, so same rule, if you remember, the example was with lire, to read, but then it's exactly the same rule, so if you look carefully, it's ending with the, this E, uh, okay? So you take it away, and after that you put the ending. J'écrirai. Tu écrirais, il écrirait, elle écrirait, nous écririons, vous écririez, ils écriraient, elles écriraient. All right, so it's not that difficult anyway. But of course, we've got some exceptions, as I said in the beginning. So the, the, the idea for these exceptions is that the, the, the word, or sorry, the verb will change. So endings will be the same, so that's one good news. So all the endings that we saw previously, well, they will be the same, but then you get to remember the way the verb will change. So if you saw, that's the reason why I, I spoke about the future uh, lesson, if you saw the future lesson and you remember the way these verbs are changing for the future, the good news is that they will be changing the same way. So être will become sœur, all right? And then after that, you will have to put the endings. Je serai, all right? So you will keep this sœur all the time for your conjugation, and after that, you will add all the endings that we saw, okay? Avoir will become or. Same thing here. After that, you will add all the endings, so tu aurais. Aller will become ir. 
then you'll get il irait, elle irait. Faire will become fur. Nous ferions. Savoir will become sort. Vous sauriez. Voir will become vert. Il verrait, elle verrait. Okay, so let's see them one more time. So, être, to be, je serai. Avoir, to have, tu aurais. Aller, to go, il irait, elle irait. Faire, to do, nous ferions. Savoir, to know, vous sauriez. Voir, to see, il verrait, elle verrait. All right, so one more list of exceptions. Pouvoir will become pour. Je pourrais. Vouloir will become voudre. Tu voudrais. Pleuvoir will become pleuvre. Il pleuvrait. Devoir will become d'œuvre. Nous devrions. Venir will become viendre. Vous viendriez. Courir will become cour. Il courrait, elle courrait. All right, so let's see them one more time. Pouvoir can. Je pourrais. Vouloir to want. Tu voudrais. Pleuvoir to rain. Il pleuvrait. Devoir to have to. Nous devrions venir, to come, vous viendriez, courir, to run, il courrait, elle courrait. All right. So, it was the first thing regarding the conditionnel présent, and then, as I said, regarding the, the, the fact that it's quite close to the future, so the important thing is to remember that the endings for the future are AI, AS, A, ONS, EZ, ONT. Okay, but then for the conditional present, if you remember them, it was AIS, AIS, AIT, IONS, IEZ, AIENT. So to be totally honest, if you think about that, because basically we construct these two tenses the same way, okay? So the endings here and here will be the only way to make the difference between the future and the conditional. So it's quite important to really remember them uh, by heart. Okay, so remember, future, a i a s a O N S E Z O N T, but then conditional present A I S A I S A I T I O N S I E Z A I E N T. Okay, and now let's see when we should use this conditional present because that's the most important thing. The first situation would be to express a desire or a wish. Exprime un désir ou un souhait. Okay. J'aimerais être en vacances. Aimer, to like or to love. Okay. And here you get the conditional form. Être, to be, en vacances, on vacation, holidays. J'aimerais être en vacances. The second use will be if you want to donner un conseil, to give an advice. Vous devriez apprendre le français. Okay, devoir, to have to, but then in that case, when you say vous devriez, you should. Uh, that would be the more correct translation. Vous devriez apprendre, apprendre is to learn, le français, French. And then if you want to ask something politely, that's the tense you should definitely use. And especially if you go in a coffee restaurant or if you go in a shop and you you want to ask some for something then use this conditional form 
I mean, trust me, it's quite important. Okay? Je voudrais un café, s'il vous plaît. Okay? Je voudrais un café, s'il vous plaît. Okay? So let's read them one more time. J'aimerais être en vacances. Vous devriez apprendre le français. Je voudrais un café, s'il vous plaît. Another use of this conditionnel present is, is if you want to construct a sentence, like in English, for instance, with this if. Okay? So, if in French is si. And then the rule is quite strict in French. If you start with this if, si, then it should be followed by the imparfait form, we didn't see this form yet, it will come in the next lesson or in the next unit, sorry. So, no stress about that, it's just an example, but it's just, just for you to know that if you want to construct this if structure, then it should be followed by imparfait. Then comes le conditionnel. Okay, so let's take one example. Si j'avais le temps, je ferais du sport. Okay, so si j'avais le temps, so if I had, it's the same in English, huh? you, 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 put, uh, you put this, I had. Si j'avais le temps, so time, je ferais, remember it was faire, to do, but then at the conditional form, du sport. Okay, another example. Si j'étais riche, so riche, rich, était, it's to be. Remember, je voyagerai, voyager is to travel, autour du monde, around the world. Oops. <laughs> And then the last one, si elle était là, so être, to be, là, here, nous irions, so remember it was to go, aller, and it becomes ir, irions, nous promener. Okay, so se promener, to have a walk. And in this unit, we'll discover together le passé composé. So le passé composé is a past tense, and it's uh, probably the one that you will use in most of the cases, because that's the past tense that we tend to use to express what we've been doing uh, for the weekend, or, uh, well, the, well, normally the, the, the past that is not that far. If you're talking about your childhood or something really far, we will normally use uh, another tense that's called uh, l'imparfait, that we'll see a bit later. So now, in this uh, lesson, we'll focus on le passé composé. So, we'll have now a few examples here, just to show you first how it goes, okay? So, in this first sentence, so I took this manger to eat verb, okay? Je mange au restaurant. And so if you look carefully, you can see that this sentence is at the present tense. Okay? Je mange au restaurant. So I eat at the restaurant. Okay? And then here, I wanted to show you what this passé composé form looks like. Okay? So you can see that you've got first here the verb avoir at the present form. Okay? So it goes like j'ai. And then The second part, so because that's the main concept of this passé composé, composé means, means composed, so you, you will have two parts, okay? And this is the second part here, and that's what we call participe passé, so uh, past participle, and it goes like manger with an accent here at the end, okay? So we'll see why in a few minutes, okay? So the rest doesn't change, okay? And then you've got this j'ai mangé au restaurant, Well, it's the sentence, same sentence, but it's at the past tense. So, it could be like yesterday, maybe last weekend. Okay, another example here. Tu regardes la télévision. Okay, remember, regarder is to watch. Okay, so you are watching the television. Tu regardes la télévision. So, that's here, the present tense. Okay, and so if we want to put the same verb at the past tense. Well, basically, we've got to respect the same rule that we had previously. Here, you see, we had avoir, so at the first person for je, and then here, we've got avoir at the second person for tu, you, 
okay? And it's at the present form here, tu as, and then same thing here, you will have to put this participe passé form, okay, past participle, with an accent here, because it belongs to the first group, tu as regardé la télévision, okay? So, of course, I know that many, many of you will say, mm -hmm, it looks so simple, it's not possible to be so simple in French, and that's, that's, that's true, we will have exceptions, and here we've got a good example. So, il va au travail, okay, remember, va, it's the form at the present tense uh, for the verb aller, aller is to go, okay, and so we will see that few verbs we will have to change a little bit the, 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 the way to construct the passé composé because here you can see that in the past tense sentence here we don't use avoir as we did previously like with manger, j'ai, tu as, with regarder, okay? But we will use être, okay? Il, est, and then you can see here aller, so participe passé, au, travail at work. Il est allé au travail. Okay? And this will be, well, the first difficulty of uh, the passé composé form. So you should really uh, think about the fact that, well, most of the verbs will be constructed with avoir, okay? And the, the one that you will construct with the être will be the exceptions. So you will have to remember them by heart, of course, okay, so we'll, we'll make a list after. But then, so if we want to make it simple, so just to resume the whole thing first, okay, so normally if you want to construct this passé composé form, then the first part that you will have to put is avoir at the present tense, and then the second part will be this participe passé form, okay, that we will see, and then you will get this passé composé, okay. For the exceptions, as I said, we will have to use être at the present form, then the participe passé form, so you will get this passé composé. Okay? Now, let's see the verbs that will require être at the passé composé. The first one that we saw in the, the, the example that I gave you previously was aller, aller is to go. Okay? Second one, arriver. Arriver means to arrive. Third one, descendre. Descendre means to go down. Then, devenir. Devenir means to become. Then, entrer. Entrer, to enter. Monter. Monter, to go up. Mourir. Mourir, to die. Naître, naître, to born. Parti, par, sorry, sorry, partir, partir, to leave. Rester, rester, to stay. Retourner, retourner, to return. Sortir, sortir, to go out. Tomber, tomber, to fall. Venir, venir, to come. Okay, so remember that all these verbs here that we saw will require the verb être at the passé composé form. Okay, so the others will require avoir. Okay, so you can see now that, I mean, most of the verbs will require avoir. Okay, and then these verbs will require être. Okay, so let's repeat them one more time. Aller, arriver, descendre, devenir, entrer, monter, mourir, naître. Partir, rester, retourner, sortir, tomber, venir. Okay? So, let's see the other 
group of verbs that will all the time require être. And these verbs are, well, what we call this réfléchi, réfléchi, sorry, verb réfléchi, so I was thinking about the reflexive in English, okay? So, uh, se regarder, for instance, okay? So, remember that we've got these verbs, like, so, regarder is to watch or to look, and then when you put this se regarder, well, basically, you will have the meaning like to look or to watch at oneself, okay? And all these verbs will require être, okay? S'appeler as well, to call oneself. Se présenter, to present oneself. So all these verbs, but then more generally, all the verbs constructed with this se form, okay? So to have this reflexive form, will require être. Okay, so now let's see again one more time, if that's okay with you, the conjugation at the present form of avoir and être, because that's the verbs you will have to use. Okay, so avoir, remember, it goes like j'ai, tu as, il a, elle a, so remember, masculine, feminine. Nous avons, so you can put this little liaison, link between the two, nous avons, vous avez, same thing here, little link between the two, and then ils ont, so the link as well, the liaison, elles ont, all right, so j'ai, tu as, il a, elle a, nous avons, vous avez, ils ont, elles ont. Okay, so it's avoir at the present form, so the form you will have to use for the first part of the passé composé, and then être, je suis, tu es, il est, elle est, nous sommes, vous êtes, okay, little liaison here, little link, vous êtes, ils sont, Elles sont. Okay, so one more time. Je suis, tu es, il est, elle est, nous sommes, vous êtes, ils sont, elles sont. All right? And so for the second part, so what we call this participe passé, so the past participle, you get to remember that the first group of verbs, so if you remember, they end with this er. Okay, so we had parler, regarder, etc. So the infinitive form like er will give you a accent aigu at the participe passé. So for example, for example here we've got parler, parler is to talk or to speak. So it ends like here with er, you can see that. First group of verbs, so it will go like parler, like that. The funny thing is that phonetically they are the same. So infinitive parler, so if you remember we saw that previously, so I mean this combination of two letters at the end of the words normally gives the sound E, okay? Parler and then past participle, participe passé, parler. Same thing here, regarder, regarder, okay? And then even the, the high irregular verb Aller, because aller doesn't belong to the first group, uh, even if it ends with a uh, air, we saw that previously. But then even this verb will give, uh, well, <laughs> normal or easy uh, participe passé. Okay, it goes like aller, like that. Okay, so parler, regarder, regarder is to watch, and then aller, aller is to go. Okay, the verbs from the second group, so second group, not all the ER verbs, unfortunately, <laughs> but most of them, well, it would be quite simple because this ER will become E, all right? So you will have verbs like choisir, choisir is to choose, will become choisi for the participe passé form, okay? Finir, to finish, to end, fini, like that. Unir, to unite, Uni. All right? So it's not that difficult. Okay? So choisi, fini, 
uni. After that, the difficulties uh, are for the third group of verbs, so the irregular ones. So it's usually it's quite difficult to make some groups and subgroups, but then we can we can we can have few examples here like connaître. Connaître is to know, okay, and it will give you connu, okay. Voir, like o e r, will become vu. All right, then. Verbs like partir, okay, even if it doesn't belong to the second group, it will give you parti, okay, rire, i r e, it will give you ri, okay, partir to leave and then rire to laugh, okay, écrire to write, so i r e will give it, écrit, okay, remember that even if you've got this final t, you don't pronounce it, so it goes like écrit. Okay, dire, i r e as well, will give you di, same thing here, i t, but then you pronounce it i, okay, écrire to write, dire to say, and then mettre to put, so e, t, t, r, e, will give you this i, s, mi, same thing here, final s is not pronounced, mi, okay, and then prendre, so e, n, d, r, e, will give es pri okay same thing here you don't pronounce the final s okay so let's see that again so when you get this être it will go like like u connaître connu then when you will have this o i r it will give you u voir vu okay i r i partir parti i r e will give you i rire ri okay I R E here I T, but then phonetically it's I e as well because you don't pronounce the final T. Okay, écrire, écrit. I R E I T, same group. Dire, di. Okay, then E T T R E will give you this I e S, but then you don't pronounce the S, so you get I. E. Mettre, mi, and then E N D R E I e S, but then same thing here, the sound I. E. Prendre. Pri, okay. So this is normally the difficulty of the passé composé to remember uh, the, the participe passé form. Okay. In most of the cases, I, I tend to to tell my student that well, they should learn them by heart, especially the irregular ones, because after that, I mean, the regular ones are quite easy to to handle. But anyway, it's your shot. <laughs> so let's see a few examples now. So if we take the verb uh, parler, so parler to speak or to talk, so it goes like j'ai parlé. Okay. Tu as parlé. Il a parlé. Elle a parlé. Nous avons parlé. Vous avez parlé. Ils ont parlé. Elles ont parlé. So if you look at it, it's not that difficult, you know. As I said, the only thing first that you should really remember it's the verb avoir. But then I assume that at this uh, level now it should be okay for you. And then you get to after that construct it and put this participe passive form. And for the regular verbs like parler, it's quite easy, and phonetically, it's the same. So, j'ai parlé. Okay? Let's see now a few things that you get to remember. So, if you construct the passé composé form with the verb être. Okay? So, we saw the exceptions, I mean, the verbs that are constructed with être. Okay? You will have to remember one important thing. If you've got here, the example of il est allé, okay? So you can see that aller goes like that without anything after. But if you look at the feminine form, elle est allée, so you can see that the difference between the two is that I've been adding this little e at the end. So this is the thing that you will have to remember if you construct this passé composé form with être, you will have to put at the end of this participe passé form something according to the gender. So in that case, it's the feminine form. You will have to put a at the end, okay? 
or let's continue if you've got the plural form like here il okay masculine plural and that's important you will have to add this s at the end and logically for once in French if you've got the feminine plural form so elle here elles sont allées you will have to add first this e so for the feminine and then s for the plural okay so that's the one I mean important thing that you will have to remember if you want to construct this passé composé form okay keep in mind one thing if you want to use French orally so if you want only to talk the good thing here listen to me il est allé elle est allée ils sont allés elles sont allées so the good news for you is that even if you write them differently you will pronounce it the same way so phonetically it doesn't change at all okay here you've got aller aller even if you've got the final e you don't pronounce it aller even if you've got the s aller even if you've got this e s okay so doesn't change but if you want to write correctly you will have to remember that you put this final e uh, when you've got a feminine form so feminine singular form you will have to put to put this s if you've got the plural form so masculine plural and you will have to add this uh, s if you've got the feminine plural form okay continuons so if we have the the full thing for aller it goes like je suis allé tu es allé il est allé elle est allée nous sommes allés vous êtes allés ils sont allés elles sont allées okay let's see as well an example for all these reflexive verbs je me suis présenté tu t'es présenté il s'est présenté elle s'est présentée nous nous sommes présentés vous vous êtes présenté ils se sont présentés elles se sont présentées okay so the thing that we've got to keep in mind is in most of the cases you will have to use this avoir at the present form then this participe passé form and you will get this passive composé okay in some cases for the verbs so the list of verbs we saw and it's not a long list so try to remember it and all the reflexive verbs you will have to use this être at the present form then the participe passé then you will get this passé composé form this lesson will work on le participe passé so in the previous lesson we uh, well i introduced the passé composé form okay and if you remember it was quite important to know how to construct this participe passé so participe passé is a past participle in english um just because well in most of the cases it is easy for the regular group so the two first group of verbs that we have in the french language but uh for the rest of the verbs it's a bit tricky to be uh, to be honest okay so we'll see that together but then so as i said for the first group so the ver the group of verbs ending with a er like that it is quite easy because you only need to take this a uh, er away and replace it with a uh, accent aigu okay so parler to talk to speak will give you parler okay the good thing for the phonetical part is that it is the same parler parler you pronounce it the same okay regarder so to watch will give you regarder okay and then even this aller verb so irregular verb but then it will behave that like the, the regular verbs uh, so aller will give you aller uh, accent aigu like that okay second group of verbs not all the er verbs we'll see that a bit later but most of them and it's quite easy as well because you will have to take this er away and just replace it with e 
Okay? So, choisir, to choose, will give you choisi. Finir, will become fini. Unir, uni. Okay? Choisir, to choose, finir, to finish or to end, unir, to unite. Okay? So, the two first group of verbs are quite easy to modify just to make this participe passé form. Okay? But then, the third group is a bit more tricky, so we saw a few examples, so like this one, A, I, T, R, E will become U, connaître, to know, connu. O, I, R, voir, to see, will become U, vu. Okay? I, R, so even if partir doesn't belong to the second group, then it will behave the same way, will become I, partir, to leave, parti. Rire, I, R, E, same thing here, will become I. Rire, ri. Okay? I, R, E, will become I, T. Okay? Uh, écrire, to write, will become écrit. Okay? Remember that phonetically this final T doesn't exist. Okay? So the sound will be only this I. Écrit. All right? Dire, I, R, E, will become I, T, D. Okay, phonetically, same thing here. You don't pronounce the final T. Mettre, E, T, T, R, E, will become I, S. Final S, not pronounced, so mettre, to put, mi. Prendre, so E, N, D, R, E, will become I, S. Same thing here, final S, not pronounced, so prendre, pris. Okay, so we will work now on the two main verbs of the French language, so avoir, to have, and obviously it will be a bit strange. <laughs> it will become a, u, so you will have to write this participe passé form like that, okay? But you will have to pronounce it u. So remember, main difference or big difference between what you write and what you pronounce, so you write it like that, a, u, but then you pronounce it u. Okay, and then être is, well, it's a bit more simple in a way. So it's été, okay, e accent aigu, t, e accent aigu, été, all right, so u and then été. All right, so let's see, or let's discover a few groups of verbs. So verbs ending with r, i, r, okay, will become r, u, for the participe passé form, so we'll see a few verbs. Courir, couru. Accourir, accouru. Concourir, concouru. Parcourir, parcouru. Now a new group, so N, I, R, so verbs ending with N, I, R, and it will become N, U, okay? Tenir, tenu. Appartenir à, appartenu à. Contenir, contenu. Entretenir, entretenu. And then it continues. Maintenir, maintenu. Obtenir, obtenu. Retenir, retenu. Okay? So now, another group, so verbs ending with U, I, R, E, and they, they will become U, I, T, okay, for the participe passé. Let's see. Conduire, conduit. Construire, construit. Cuire, cuit. Détruire, détruit. Instruire, instruit. Okay, so you can notice that even if I put this final T, so as usual, I don't pronounce it. Okay, conduit, construit, cuit, détruit, instruit. Okay, so a few more verbs. Introduire, introduit, produire, produit. Réduire, réduit, séduire, séduit, traduire, 
traduit. Okay, so the same rule because, well, basically it's the same group and then same rule, final T not pronounced, so introduit, produit, réduit, séduit, traduit. Okay? Another group of verbs, so verbs ending with A, I, accent circonflexe, T, R, E, and it will become U. So let's see a few examples. Connaître, connu. Reconnaître, reconnu. Apparaître, apparu. Disparaître, disparu. Paraître, paru. And now let's discover the oudre verbs like coudre, cousu, moudre, moulu, résoudre, résolu. So it's just to show you that, you know, some verbs can be really, really irregular and it's quite easy in some cases to make some groups and subgroups. So you should learn these verbs and the others, I mean the, the irregular ones, by heart if you really want to master this uh, participe passé form and all the composed tenses that will use the, will use the participe passé. Okay, so, but then let's continue. The groups, so group of verbs ending with A, I, N, D, R, E, and they will become A, I, N, T. Okay, so a few examples. Craindre, Craint, contraindre, contraint, plaindre, plein. Okay, and as usual, final T here is not pronounced, so you get craint, contraint, plein. Okay, another group, so E, I, N, D, R, E, and it will become E, I, N, T. Okay, so let's see. Atteindre, Atteint, éteindre, éteint, feindre, fin, peindre, peint, teindre, teint. Ok, as usual, final T, not pronounced. Atteint, éteint, fin, peint, teint. Ok? Now the verbs ending with O, I, N, D, R, E, and they will become O, I, N, T. Okay, so let's see. Joindre, joint, rejoindre, rejoint. Okay, same thing, final T, not pronounced. Joint, so when you get this O, I, N combination of letters, you get the sound OIN. Okay, joint, and then rejoint. Another group, so verbs ending with O, I, R, so it will become U, or then U, accent circonflexe. So even if you put this accent circonflexe, you don't pronounce it, okay, it doesn't change the sound of the letter U, so it's the same phonetically, it's U, and then U, okay? A few examples, décevoir, déçu, apercevoir, aperçu, concevoir, Conçu, recevoir, reçu, devoir, dû, mouvoir, mu. All right. And now another group, so I, R, E, and they will become I for the participe passé form. Okay. Rire, ri, sourire. Souris, suffire, suffit. L'imparfait, so we saw previously le passé composé, so this past tense uh, that we use quite often, and this is the second one, so l'imparfait. And in this video, we'll see together the first part, l'utilisation, so when do we use l'imparfait, Okay, and then the second part will be la formation. So how do we build, how do, do we construct this uh, imparfait form? Okay, so, but then let's focus now on l'utilisation. So when do we use l'imparfait? And then the first situation when we will use l'imparfait will be if you want to describe something in the past. Une description 
dans le passé. Okay, so if you want to describe something in the past, like in this example here, la pièce, the room, était, so that's the verb here, the verb is to be, okay, and it's the, uh, the imparfait form, était, grande, big, et sombre, dark. Okay, so in that case, you want to describe the room, then you should use l'imparfait. Second situation, une habitude dans le passé. So, a, a habit, something that you, you are used to do in the past, okay, and the example is, je Partait, partir is to leave, okay, and it's the imparfait form here, le matin, the morning, à 8 heures. Okay, so in that case, you want to say that it's an habit, something that you do in the past, then you should use l'imparfait, okay? Other situation, when you will need to use l'imparfait, une répétition dans le passé, okay? So, répétition... You understand? Something that repeats itself dans le passé. The example here. Nous allions tous les soirs au restaurant. Okay? So, aller is to go tous les soirs. Okay? So, every evening au restaurant. Alright? So, something that you do and that repeats itself, itself in the past. And then, if you want to say something that lasts, durées to last in the past, dans le passé, then... In that case, this uh, sentence is quite interesting because I've been, I wanted to, to make the difference between the use of the, the, the imparfait here, okay? And then here, here you've got the passé composé form, all right? So, je regardais la télé, so la télévision, all right? So, in that case, you tend to use, of course, l'imparfait because it lasts <laughs> a while uh, when you watch TV, so if it's a movie or something like that. Quand, when... Tu as appelé, okay? So, uh, appelé is to call, call on the phone, for instance, okay? So, in that case, you want to make the difference between something that happens and it's uh, an action. So, tu as appelé, okay? And then here, you use l'imparfait, well, because it lasts longer, okay? So, je regardais la télé quand tu as appelé, all right? And then, we've got another structure. So, if you want to insist on the fact that something uh, it will last and then something uh, continues, then we've got this structure, être, so it's to be, être en train de, okay, and then you will put l'infinitive form after that, so the basic form, all right, so an example here as well, so I wanted to make the difference as well with, you know, between the, the, the um, passé composé form here, je n'ai pas répondu, répondre is to answer, okay, car, because, J'étais en train de faire mes devoirs, ok? So, faire mes devoirs, to do my homework, ok? And then, in that case, you use this structure, j'étais en train de, because you want to say that, well, it lasts, ok? It's quite long. It's not something that will take one minute or two minutes, but it's longer than that, ok? So, that's uh, the reason why we use this, j'étais en train de faire, so, était en train de, as we saw here. Okay, so you will have to use this verb être, okay, but then at the imparfait form, of course. Okay, so and then one thing that you should keep in mind is that être, so to be, croire, to believe, penser, to think, savoir, to know, are often, and it's quite important, souvent, often, so it's not always, okay, because uh, you, it's not possible to say always, especially if you're talking about French grammar, okay, but uh, often you use them at uh, l'imparfait form, okay. Now, let's see how to construct uh, this imparfait, okay, so I've been taking some verbs from, from the first group and then the second and the third group, okay? If you remember, we've got three groups of verbs in, uh, in French. So the first one, uh, regarder, so is to watch, okay? And then I've been putting this new form at the present. For a good reason, you will see why a bit later. So you should know the present form of regarder and it goes like nous Regardons, so that's the present form, nous regardons, okay. For the second group, I've been taking finir, finir, to finish, to end, okay. Same thing, you will put this new form at the present, nous 
finissons. Okay? And then for the third group of verbs, I took prendre. Prendre is to take. Okay? And it goes like nous prenons. All right? So nous regardons, nous finissons, nous prenons. So the reason why I wanted you to see the new form is just because that's the form we will use to construct the imparfait. Okay? So the thing will be to take away the ending of nous. And the ending of nous, it's O-N-S. Like you saw here, here, and here. So the idea is that this ending, you will take it away. Okay? Then, that's the thing we will keep. Regarde like that, without the ending for nous. Finis, without the ending for nous. And then prun, without the ending. Okay? And after that, you will add the endings for l'imparfait. And they will be like for je, A-I-S, for tu, A-I-S, for il or elle, A-I-T, for nous, I-O-N-S, for vous, I-E-Z, and for il, elle, at the plural, A-I-E-N-T. All right, so now if you, uh, or if we talk about the pronunciation, um, the good thing is that this will be pronounced E, this will be pronounced E, obviously, because you write it the same way, this will be pronounced E as well. So final S and final T are not pronounced, and this is pronounced the same way. And the good news is that this form a e e n t is pronounced e as well okay so we've got e here e e and then e okay so that's quite easy to produce i mean it's not normal it's not uh, a big difficulty for the the students to 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 make this e sound okay and then for nu it will be so if you remember correctly so final s is not pronounced here Okay, and then this O N, so it's a nasal and it goes in your nose and it goes like on. Mm. All right, so you don't hear any N, so it's really on. Mm. Okay, when you add this E before, okay, you will get the Y, y sound. So you get Yon. Yon, that's the full form, okay? Yon. And then Y here, okay? So E, E, E. Ion, ye, e. All right? So now, je, regarde, and then e. So that's the full form that you, you will have, and then you will pronounce it, je, regardais. All right? So if we had the example for finir, it was finis, remember this form that we got from the new form of the present, okay, so finis, and then you add e, je finissais, all right, and then the last verb we had was prendre, if I remember correctly, yes, and it was pren, okay, the form that we got when we took away this ons ending from the present, okay, so pren, and then you add your ending, e, je prenais, Okay, so let's see how it goes for uh, all the forms. So, je regardais, so it's uh, regarder to watch. Tu regardais, il regardait, elle regardait. Nous regardions, vous regardiez, il regardait, elle regardait. Okay, so remember, regardait, 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 and then as well, regardait. And after that, you've got this yon, as I said, regardion, and then yé, regardié. All right, let's see, finir now. Je finissais, tu finissais, il finissait, elle finissait, nous finissions, vous finissiez, 
il finissait, elle finissait. Okay, so same thing here. Have a look. Finissait, 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 same form. And then finissait here, same form. I mean phonetically, okay? And then ion, finition, and then finissier. All right? And the last verb we had was to take, prendre. Je prenais, tu prenais, il prenait, elle prenait, nous prenions, vous preniez, il prenait, elle prenait. Okay, so remember that in that case you will have to really pronounce the e uh, like a uh, prenez. All right, so same thing here, final s not pronounced. Je prenais, tu prenais, il prenait, final t not pronounced, so the same form. Okay, and then plural as I said, prenez as well. Okay, and here, prenions, preniez. Okay. And then, of course, of course, avoir and être can be, in some cases, quite tricky. So that's the reason why um, we'll take a few minutes to watch or to have a look at them. The first one, avoir, and, well, it's not that tricky at all because it goes like that. J'avais, tu avais, il avait, elle avait, nous avions, vous aviez, ils avaient, elles avaient. So it is quite easy, honestly, it is quite easy. Just try to remember, especially if you want to use it only orally, then it's quite easy because it's avait, 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 and avait, remember, okay? So j'avais, final S not pronounced, tu avais, il avait, final T not pronounced, nous avions, let's make this beautiful liaison here, nous avions, okay? Vous aviez, same thing here, a little liaison, ils avaient, Elles avaient, okay? And then let's have a look at être. J'étais, tu étais, il était, elle était, nous étions, vous étiez, ils étaient, elles étaient. Okay? Same thing, not that difficult at all, and especially if you want to pronounce it, it's not really difficult. J'étais, okay? Remember, here we've got a uh, accent aigu, so it goes like E, alright? J'étais. Okay, tu étais, il était, elle était, nous étions, little liaison here to make it more beautiful, nous étions, okay, final S not pronounced, remember, vous étiez, same thing here, little liaison, and then ils étaient, liaison as well, elles étaient. Bonjour à tous, and welcome to Learn French with Vincent, this is Unité 8, leçon F. And in this lesson, we'll work together on le passé composé et l'imparfait. So, I just introduced this imparfait form in the previous lesson. And we saw le passé composé, well, a long time ago in a way. Though still, um, the thing is that normally with students, uh, when they've got uh, these two forms, so after having introduced this imparfait form, it's usually quite tricky and difficult to know exactly when to use le passé composé and l'imparfait. Okay, so that's the reason why I thought it might be useful to just spend a few minutes with this video and just try to, to, to work a little bit on that and see if uh, things and um, uses are uh, okay with you. Okay, so let's start now. So in this video, first I will focus on l'imparfait, so when should we use l'imparfait, and then after that, le passé composé. Okay, so the first thing that will refresh will be l'imparfait. Okay, so l'imparfait, remember that you will use it when you want to describe something in the past, okay? So ex the example I took, la pièce était grande et sombre, okay? La pièce, the room, grande, big, sombre, dark, okay? So in that case, you use être, to be, all right? Uh, and then you use it at the imparfait form to make this description, okay? The second use will be something that you have so, une habitude, it's a habit or something that you are used to do, okay? So, une habitude dans le passé. So, the example, je partais le matin à 8 heures, okay? So, in that case, you want to insist on the fact that it's something that you tend to do every morning. Maybe, je partais le matin à 8 heures, okay? So, not so far from this habit uh, concept is uh, something that will repeat or that did repeat itself in the past, okay? Une répétition dans le passé. 
So if you want to express or to, uh, well, say something that repeats itself in the past, then in that case, you should use l'imparfait. The example, nous allions, okay, so aller, to go, tous les soirs, okay, so every evening, au restaurant. Okay, so in that case, you should definitely use the imparfait form, okay, nous allions tous les soirs au restaurant. All right. Another use would be une situation qui dure dans le passé. Durer is to last. Okay? So in that case, I did write this sentence with the two forms. So here you've got the imparfait form and here you've got the passé composé form. Okay? And then we tend to use both here just to make well clearly the difference of use of them. So the first one, je regardais, regardais is to watch, la télé. Okay, so, je regardais la télé quand, when, tu as appelé, appelé is to call, okay, on the phone, quand tu as appelé, all right? So, we want here, with this sentence, here, to use the imparfait form because it lasts in the past, okay, so when you watch TV, maybe it, it won't last one minute or two, but a bit longer than that, okay? And then, tu as appelé, well, it's an action, something that doesn't take too long if you compare it to the previous verb here je regardais la télé okay so that's the reason why here je regardais la télé uh, will be used at the the, the the imparfait form because it lasts longer than the the other one okay to appeler all right and then another structure that we can use as well if we want to insist on the fact that something lasts and something continue okay pour insister sur la durée et continuité then the structure is être en train de, and then you put your verb at the infinitive form here. So infinitive form is the basic form of the verb. Okay. So être. So that's the verb être that you should conjugate at the imparfait form. Okay. And then same thing here. I wanted to make the difference between the two. So here you've got this passé composé. Je n'ai pas répondu. So répondre to answer. Okay, maybe someone was calling on the phone. Je n'ai pas répondu, okay? Car, because, j'étais en train de faire mes devoirs. Faire mes devoirs, to do my homework, okay? So, j'étais en train de faire mes devoirs. So, in that case, you use this structure, so, être en train de, because you want to insist on the fact that, well, it takes a while to make them, okay? J'étais en train de faire mes devoirs, all right? Now, le passé composé. So, le passé composé, well, the first use, of course, of le passé composé, it's une action, an action, qui s'est passé, that took place, avant le moment présent. So, before the present moment, the, the example that we could have here, je suis en retard parce que j'ai marché trop lentement. Okay? And here, well, the first part here, Je suis en retard. I am late. It's the present. Okay? And then you want to, well, give the reason why. Parce que, because, j'ai marché. So, marché is to walk. Okay? And this is the imparfait form. Okay? Trop lentement. Too slowly. Okay? Je suis en retard parce que j'ai marché trop lentement. Then, une action dans le passé qui a des limites temporelles. Okay, so it's an action that took place in the past, all right, but then you've got some clear limits when it started or when it ended, okay, and then the example here, dimanche dernier, j'ai dormi toute la journée, dormir is to sleep, okay, so this is here, the passé composé form, toute la journée, all day long, okay, so you've got clearly a limit, toute la journée, you know exactly when it stopped, all right. Une action qui est terminée, ok? So, clearly here, if you want to introduce your birth date, then je suis né, ok? So, it was an action in a way, ok? But still, it's finished, so, le 16 juin 1970, ok? Je suis né, so that's the reason why here, you will use this verb naître, ok? Je suis né le 16 juin 1970, Une histoire composée de plusieurs actions. Okay, so if you've got several actions, okay, in a story, then normally you should use le passé composé. For instance, 
hier, yesterday, je suis rentré, I came back home, ok, rentré, je suis rentré, j'ai préparé à manger, etc., etc., ok, so orally you will ex well, explain to a friend or to a colleague what you've been doing uh, yesterday, ok, you want to introduce these actions, ok, and in that case, that's the tense that you will use, the passé composé, all right? If you want to speak about an event of the past with, for instance, hier, yesterday, le mois dernier, last month, ce matin, this morning, cet après-midi, this afternoon, dimanche midi, so dimanche is um, Sunday, okay, midi, noon, jeudi, Thursday, matin, morning, okay, so with these structures, and if you're talking about an event, an action, okay, in that case, you definitely should use le passé composé. Okay, so of course these are examples. Okay, we've got so many, many others that I didn't have the. Well, I didn't want to put everything in this page. All right. So if you want to use, and this is quite important, a negative form. Okay, connected to uh, the present form or the present. Uh, for instance, if you want to say that, uh, so, je n'ai jamais fait de patinage. Uh, patinage is uh, skate, ice skating, okay? You want to say that you never did ice skating. In that case, well, you should use the passé composé form, okay? Je n'ai jamais fait de patinage. Oops, I should put something instead. It's not a virgule, it's point. It should be point. Sorry, it was a little mistake here. Okay, but still, je n'ai jamais fait de patinage. Okay, same example here. Uh, il n'a jamais eu de chance. Okay, avoir de la chance, to have luck. Okay, il n'a jamais, jamais, never eu de chance. So in that case, you should put that at the passé composé form. Okay, and then, well, same thing. Nous n'avons pas eu de chance, all right? In that case, it's with pas and not never, but it's clearly the same meaning. Nous n'avons pas eu de chance, and in that case, you should definitely use here the passé composé form, okay? So, of course, avoir un être can be quite tricky, so that's the reason why we'll take a few minutes to see them, and we'll start with avoir, okay? This is the imparfait form. J'avais, tu avais, il avait, elle avait, nous avions, vous aviez, ils avaient, elles avaient. And next to it, we'll put the passé composé form. J'ai eu. Tu as eu, il a lu, il a eu, sorry, elle a eu, nous avons eu, vous avez eu, ils ont eu, elles ont eu. Ok, so let's take one minute to see them one more time. J'avais, final S not pronounced, tu avais, same thing, il avait, final T not pronounced, elle avait, nous avions, little liaison, final S not pronounced, nous avions, vous aviez, same thing here, little liaison between the two. Ils avaient, so remember, even if we've got this A, I, E, N, T, well, we don't pronounce it, or we don't pronounce this E, N, T, so we get avaient, okay, phonetically. Ils avaient, okay, and then elles avaient. And now for the passé composé form, so if you remember clearly, we use the verb avoir at the present form, then we put this participe passé form. So it does mean that it will be the same all the time. That's the reason why we see it here. Okay, and this is pronounced, so it's an exception because normally you should pronounce it differently, but so it's an ex exception. It, it is pronounced U. Okay, U. That's the way you should pronounce it. So, j'ai U. Tu as eu, il a eu, elle a eu, nous avons eu, vous avez eu, ils ont eu, elles ont eu. All right? So, j'ai eu, tu as eu, il a eu, elle a eu, nous avons eu. Okay, so here you can see that we make double liaison. Nous avons eu. Okay, same thing here. Vous avez eu, ils ont, and then here as well, tu. Ils ont eu. Elles ont eu. All right. Let's see être now. 
and it goes like j'étais, so same thing here, we'll start with the, the imparfait form. Tu étais, il était, elle était, nous étions, vous étiez, ils étaient, elles étaient. And then the passé composé form, j'ai été, tu as été, il a été, elle a été, nous avons été, vous avez été, ils ont été, elles ont été. Okay, so let's take one minute again to pronounce them. J'étais, so final S not pronounced, tu étais, same form. Il était, elle était, final T not pronounced. Here, little liaison and final S not pronounced. Nous étions, vous étiez, ils étaient, liaison as well here, and then remember, this is not pronounced. Elles étaient. Okay, then... So same same rule as uh, we saw for uh, avoir. So you get avoir here at the present form, and then you get this participe passé form. So that will repeat itself every time, and it's pronounced like été, été. All right. So j'ai été, tu as été, il a été, elle a été. So here double liaison. Nous avons été. Vous avez été, same thing here, double, double liaison, vous avez été, ils ont été, so same thing here, you get first the liaison z, and then you get the t, ok, ils ont été, alright, ils ont été, elles ont été, ok, I hope it was clear. Uh, if you want more videos, then uh, youtube.com slash imagier. And then if you want to send me a little message and um, check more things, more material, it's here, imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. And this is Unité 8, Leçon L. And in this lesson, we'll discover together le plus que parfait. So it's uh, quite interesting, not that difficult and quite useful. So let's see what le plus que parfait is. So first in this video, as usual for the tenses, because it's a past tense, we'll first discover together or see together l'utilisation. So when should we use le plus que parfait? And then how do we make, construct, build this tense. Okay, the first thing, utilisation, when do we use le plus que parfait? Important. If you want to, well, should I, yeah, I will read that the French way first, okay? Exprimer des faits qui se sont passés avant d'autres faits passés. Oh my god, it can be quite tricky. It's not really tricky. Let's say that if you want to resume or if you want to say it fast, le plus que parfait is the past in the past. Okay, so let's see. Now you've got the timeline here. Let's see first, second, and third thing. The first one could be le présent. So we are here right now. Okay, then this is the past. So if you want to express something that happened in the past, whether you use le passé composé or we saw that previously l'imparfait. Okay, and then you've got here le plus que parfait. Okay, so first if you want to talk about what happened yesterday or then even years ago, you will have to use whether passé composé or imparfait. Okay, but then if you want to make a relation to something that happened previously, you should definitely use this plus que parfait form, okay? So that's the reason why we tend to say that it's the past in the past, all right? So let's have an example. Ce matin, j'ai mangé le gâteau que tu avais préparé hier, okay? If we have a look, we've got two verbs in this sentence. This is the first one, j'ai mangé. It is the passé composé form. This is the second one. Tu avais préparé. This is le plus que parfait. Okay. Passé composé. Plus que parfait. 
So what do you want to say here? You want to say, ce matin, this morning, j'ai mangé, mangé is to eat, le gâteau, the cake, que, that, tu avais préparé, préparé is to prepare, yesterday, hier. Okay? So you want to say that, ce matin, j'ai mangé le gâteau, Okay, so it happened in the morning, this morning, and then yesterday you had prepared this cake. Okay, so that's the reason why in the second part of the sentence you use le plus que parfait because this action happened before. All right, so it was the past in the past. Okay, so let's see now how to construct it. And it's not that difficult because first, if you have a look, so I did put some uh, regular verbs here, first one, je mangeais au restaurant. So this form here is the imparfait, okay? So why did I put the imparfait? Just for you to have a look at the ending of these verb. this is avoir, okay? So you can see that's the end actually the same way R E S R E S okay and then if you have a look here you've got manger manger so you can notice that this is the participle passive form of the verb manger manger is to eat okay so first you've got avoir then you've got the participle passé okay maybe it rings a bell for you uh, second example tu regardais la télévision okay Tu avais regardé la télévision. So if you have a look, well, it looks the same. You've got first avoir, then you've got participe passé here, okay? And then, so I took this verb aller, aller is to go, and remember when we've got these composed tenses, it's a bit tricky because it doesn't use avoir as most of the verbs, but it uses être and look here, it's the same. Il était allé. So it does use être here. And then we've got the participe passé form. All right. So the rule is that if you want to construct this plus que parfait form, then you should use first avoir at the imparfait, then the participe passé, and you will get your plus que parfait form. Okay. In some cases, you will use être at the imparfait form, then the participe passé, and you will get le plus que parfait. Okay? We've been covering already few composed tenses in French, and, well, it, it does follow exactly the same rules. Okay? So that's the reason why it will be quite familiar for you, because the following verbs, aller, to go, arriver, to arrive, descendre, to go down, devenir, to become, entrer, to enter, to come in, monter, to go up, mourir, to die, naître, to born, partir, to leave, rester, to stay, retourner, to return, sortir, to go out, tomber, to fell, to fall, sorry, and then venir, to come, so all these verbs will use être. As I mean, they do for all the other composed tense that we saw, uh, like passé composé, for instance. Okay? And then all the verbes réfléchis, so reflexive verbs like se regarder, s'appeler, se présenter. So all these verbs will also require être, okay, for the plus que parfait. Okay? So let's see one more time the imparfait form of avoir and être as well, but we'll start with avoir, just because that's the form, I mean, these are the forms that you will have to use when you want to construct this plus que parfait. So it goes like, j'avais, tu avais, il avait, elle avait, nous avions, vous aviez, ils avaient, elles avaient. Okay, and then for être, j'étais, tu étais, il était, elle était, nous étions, vous étiez, Ils étaient, elles étaient. All right, so you can see here that we've got this A-I-S ending and A-I-T ending. You pronounce them the same way, okay? J'avais, tu avais, il avait. 
and then you saw probably that we've got also here a v a e e n t but then you pronounce it ave so the same way as we pronounce here okay j'avais tu avais il avait nous avions vous aviez ils avaient okay the only difference is that you will have to make the liaison between the two elles avaient ils avaient okay same thing here était, 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 and the last one, était, so you pronounce them the same way. J'étais, tu étais, il était, elle était, nous étions, vous étiez, ils étaient, elles étaient. All right? So, remember that for these participe passé forms, so the second part that you should have. Okay? Um, when we're talking about uh, verbs, so in French we've got three groups, okay? The first one is the er verbs, so verbs ending with er. Only one exception and it's aller, but then the good news is is that aller will behave the same way, so it won't be tricky. So remember that when you've got a verb like parler for instance here, parler is to talk or to speak, it ends with er, okay? You will take this er away and you will replace it with a accent aigu. Parler. Same thing, regarder, to watch, you take this er away and you put this e here. Aller, even if it doesn't belong to the first group, it will behave the same way, so that's a good news. Aller, er, you take it away and then you put this e, okay? Second group of verbs, er, unfortunately for you, not all the er verbs, okay? But then these are from the second group, choisir to choose, you take this ER away and then you change it, you put E instead, choisi. Finir, to finish, to end, ER away, same rule, and then you put fini. Unir, ER, you take it away to unite and then you get uni. Okay, after that when we talk about the third group it's quite tricky and my advice would be to try to learn them by heart like in many languages but still we have some sub groups okay so you've got a list here so the one that will end with u for instance connaître to know être will become u connu all right voir to see voir will become u vu partir well in that case they will have this E, even if it ends with ER, uh, it's not from the second group, it's from the third group, okay, so, but then it becomes parti, okay, so quite easy. Rire will become ri, okay, partir to leave, and then rire to laugh. IT, like écrire to write, ERE will become IT here. Dire to say, ERE will become IT, okay, remember, you put this T, you don't pronounce it, écrit. D. All right. And then the last subgroup here, or I think it's the last, I'm not sure about that anymore. <laughs> Maître, E, T, T, R, E will become E, S. Me, same advice here, don't pronounce the final S like we had here. T is not pronounced, S is not pronounced. Me, uh, Maître to put. And then prendre, prendre is to take, okay, E, N, D, R, E, and it will become E, S, pris. All right. An example for parler, so parler will go like that for the plus que parfait. J'avais parlé, tu avais parlé, il avait parlé, elle avait parlé, nous avions parlé, vous aviez parlé, ils avaient parlé, elles avaient parlé. Okay, so if you look carefully, I did put this E uh, in orange just to show you that when you construct I mean, a normal structure or simple structure like subject, verb, okay, nothing in between. Then, if you have avoir, you don't put anything at the end. So, you don't need to add this e for the feminine or s for the plural. Just keep your participe passé like that. If you constructed with avoir. But, have a look here. Aller, you write it like that, aller. This is the masculine singular form, so basic form. Feminine singular form, you will have to add this E uh, for the feminine. 
masculine plural form, you will have to add this S for the plural. And then here, feminine plural form, you will have to add this E, uh, S, so E uh for the feminine and S for the plural. The good news is that phonetically they go the same way, aller, 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 all right? But if you want to write correctly, remember to put E uh for the feminine, S for the plural, and obviously E, uh, S for the feminine plural, okay? So let's see aller now. J'étais allé. Tu étais allé. Il était allé. Elle était allée. Nous étions allés. Vous étiez allés. Ils étaient allés. Elles étaient allés. All right, so you can hear that here, for instance, I make here a liaison. Ils étaient, and then here I make a liaison as well. Ils étaient allés. Elles étaient allées. All right, and then remember, allez, allez. Allez, 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 and then allez. So the same phonetical form, okay? If you want to construct this plus que parfait, so I took this example with a um, verbe réfléchi, okay? Je m'étais présenté, tu t'étais présenté, il s'était présenté, elle s'était présentée, nous nous étions présentés, vous vous étiez présenté. Il s'était présenté, elle s'était présentée. All right, so remember, all these reflexive verbs, so les verbes réfléchis, will require all the time être, okay? Remember, avoir at the imparfait form, and then participe passé, and you will get a beautiful plus que parfait, and in some cases, être at the imparfait form, plus participe passé, will give you another beautiful plus que parfait. That was, that was it for the plus que parfait. Uh, if you want more videos, then youtube.com slash imagier, and then the website is here, imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bonjour à tous, and welcome to Learn French with Vincent, and this is Unité 7, Leçon P. And in this lesson, we'll discover together le conditionnel Passé. So, maybe some of you might think that it's a bit early to introduce this conditionnel passé form because normally it comes a bit later, but still I think that we've been introduced this conditionnel présent form in this unit, so it's still warm and I still have the feeling and I have the feeling that normally it should be okay for avoir and être, so at the conditionnel présent. That's the reason why I think it might be useful to introduce this conditionnel passé form, especially because it's not that difficult if you master the conditionnel présent form and then the passé composé, I mean by that, these participe passé forms, okay? So we'll see how it goes. And then the first thing that we'll see in this lesson is l'utilisation, okay? So when do we use this conditionnel passé form? And the second thing that we'll work on is la formation, so the way we make it or we build it. Okay, so let's start with the first one, so utilisation, okay? And then the first use that we will have for this conditionnel passé, it's to express regrets, exprimer les regrets, exprimer des regrets. Okay, so that's the first, well, one of the first use, let's say. The second one would be une information non confirmée. So if you're looking at the news, for instance, and then they want to talk about something that happened, but then they don't have all the uh, elements to con confirm this information. So normally in that case, they just use this conditionnel passé form, okay? And then something, I mean, the last one would be imaginer des situations irréelles dans le passé. So you want to imagine some situations that, well, technically are not real and they take place in the past. So that's the use of le conditionnel passé. Okay, so first one, exprimer des regrets here. Second use, information non confirmée. And then the last one, imaginer des situations irréelles dans le passé. Ok? And now, let's see how we make this conditionnel passé. Alright? So, first example I wanted to put is Je mangerai au restaurant. Ok? So, this sentence 
If you remember, we saw that in, uh, well, these units anyway, when we introduced this conditionnel présent form, okay? So you've got the verb. The verb is manger. Je mangerai au restaurant. And then, if you look at the conditionnel passé, well, it will go like, j'aurais mangé au restaurant. Okay? Second example, tu regarderais la télévision. Tu aurais regardé la télévision. Okay? So, same thing here. The first one is at the conditionnel présent form. Second one, conditionnel passé form. And then, il irait au travail would become il serait allé au travail. All right. So, if you look carefully, then what you can see? I mean, you can see first that it is composed. So, you've got two parts. The first one here is avoir. Then you've got what we called and what we saw previously for the passé composé form. This is participe passé. Okay, past participle. Here the same way. Have a look. It's avoir and then it's the past participle. Regardez. And here we've got être and here we've got the past participle. So, maybe... If you want to construct this conditionnel passé form, you will have first to use avoir, like we saw, but then avoir should be at the conditionnel présent form. Okay? Then you will put after this participe passé form that we saw previously when we introduced the passé composé because that's the second part that we use for the passé composé as well. All right, so first, avoir, at the conditionnel présent form, plus participe passé, past participle, then you will get your conditionnel passé form. Okay? But we saw as well that in some cases, we'll use être, but then same thing, it should be at the conditionnel présent form, Whoops, <laughs> plus participe passé, so it doesn't change, and it will give you conditionnel passé. Okay, so you get to remember that in most of the cases, in most of the cases, you will use avoir. Okay, so if you're not sure, if you've got a doubt, then put avoir. Okay, if you know that it should be constructed with être, then put être, of course, okay? In both cases, remember, that should be, they should be at the conditionnel présent form, all right? So we'll see. So the verbs that will require être will be the following. Aller, to go. Arriver, to arrive. Descendre, to go down. Devenir, to become. Entrer, to enter to come in, to go in, monter, to go up, mourir, to die, naître, born, partir, to leave, rester, to stay, retourner, to return, sortir, to go out, tomber, to fall, venir, to come. Okay, so all these verbs will require être for this conditionnel passé form. And then if you remember what we've been seeing for the passé composé, uh, well, they are exactly the same verbs that will requ require être, whether for the passé composé or then for the conditionnel passé. And the good news is that we've got other composed tenses in French and this list will be always the same. So it means that this list of verbs that will require être will be the same for all these composed tenses. Okay? So remember one more time, aller, arriver, descendre, devenir, entrer, monter, mourir, naître, partir, rester, retourner, sortir, tomber, venir. Okay, so remember, you will have to use être with these verbs. Okay, so as I said, être, but then for the conditionnel passé, 
être « should be conjugated » at the conditional présent. All right, so let's see that. But then, the other uh, group of verbs that will require all the time « être » will be what we call les verbes réfléchis, so reflexive verbs, okay? And they usually goes like « se regarder », okay? « Se regarder », S'appeler, se présenter. So they will use être for this conditional passive form. But then, well, it, I mean, they are the, exactly the same verbs, you know, as we saw for this part, uh, passé composé. So it is always the same rule. Okay, so se regarder, s'appeler, se présenter. So all the reflexive verbs will require être at the conditional passé. Okay, so let's see now. How avoir and être, how they go at the conditionnel présent, because that's the first part that you will have to put. So it's j'aurais, tu aurais, il aurait, elle aurait, nous aurions, vous auriez, ils auraient, elles auraient. Okay, so that's what you will use in most of the cases. Okay, so let's see that. Let, let's see it one more time. J'aurais, remember, final S not pronounced. Tu aurais, same thing here, final S not pronounced. Il aurait, elle aurait, final T not pronounced. Nous aurions, liaison here, this little link. Nous aurions, final S not pronounced. Vous auriez, liaison here, and then a Z will go like E. Vous auriez, okay, and the last one. Ils auraient, so liaison here, elles auraient. And then look, if you've got A, I, E, N, T, then phonetically it goes like aurait. Okay, so phonetically you've got aurait here, aurait, aurait, and here as well, aurait. Okay, so it's quite easy to produce orally. And then être, je serais, tu serais, il serait, elle serait, nous serions, vous seriez, il serait, elle serait. Okay, so we'll see that one more time. Je serais, same thing here, final S not pronounced. Tu serais, final S not pronounced. Il serait, final T not pronounced. Elle serait. Nous serions, final S not pronounced. Vous seriez. So here when you have a, when you've got this a Z at the end, then you get the sound et seriez, so vous seriez, okay, and the last one, il serait, A-I-E-N-T here, phonetically it goes like E, okay, serait, elle serait, so same thing here, we've got serait here, phonetically I mean, serait, serait, and serait, so the same sound, okay, and then for the second part that we use, so what we call le participe passé. So, the thing is that for the first group of verbs, so normally the first group of verbs, we talk about the verbs ending at the infinitive form with a air. Okay? So, these verbs are quite easy because if you've got, well, have a look at the, the, the first example that I put, and it's parler, parler, to speak, to talk. So, you can see that it ends with a air here. It's here, okay? So this is the infinitive form, so the basic form of the verb, okay? And then the participe passé, so this past participle, will be like that, a uh, accent aigu, so parler, all right? Then the verb regarder, a uh, air here, will follow the same rule, regarder, like that, with the accent, accent aigu. And here, when we talk about the first group of verbs, we are really talking about a lot of verbs, okay? So, many, many verbs will follow this simple rule, okay? So, the second part that you will use for this conditionnel passé will be written like that if the verb is belonging to the first group of verbs. Even the verb Aller. Aller to go, remember, it's a tricky verb normally when you conjugate it, especially at the present form. But for this 
past participle form, it is quite easy because it goes like a l l e accent aigu. So it does follow the same rule. This e r become e like that. Okay. Second group of verb. So regular verbs, not all the e r verbs. Okay. Quite easy as well. Let's take choisir. Choisir is to choose. Okay, ER like that, and it will become E. Finir, to finish or to end, ER, and it will become E. Unir, to unite, ER, and it will become E. So it's quite easy. Okay, choisir, choisi, finir, fini, unir, uni. So of course, we've got exceptions, because we're talking about the third group of verbs and then this one is well it, it's tricky I mean we've got to be honest with that the first advice I would give you is to try to remember them by heart okay and I've been making um, a video about these uh, tricky uh, participe passé okay but then here we can have a look at them so subgroups here talking about the one ending with U okay so for example connaître to know will become connu Okay, voir to see will become vu. Okay, ending with e, partir will become parti. Partir is to leave. Rire to laugh will become ri. Okay, the one ending with it, like here, écrire to write, écrit. Dire to say, dire. Uh, sorry, di. <laughs> Getting tired. And then es. Mettre will become me. Mettre means to put. Prendre, to take, will become pris. Okay? So here you've got the past participle, so the, the, the participe passé of these verbs here. Okay? So we'll take one example. The example will be parler. Parler is to talk or to speak. Okay? So we will have at the conditionnel passé form, if you remember, so first part here is avoir at the conditionnel present. Then here we've got the participe passé of parler. And it will give you j'aurais parlé. Tu aurais parlé. Il aurait parlé. Elle aurait parlé. Nous aurions parlé. Vous auriez parlé. Ils auraient parlé. Elles auraient parlé. Okay? So I wanted to put this E like that in another color just to tell you that if you've got a normal structure like that, so you've got the subject and then you've got the verb, okay, nothing in between, so subject, verb, then if you use avoir, exactly the same rule as we saw for the passé composé, so if you use avoir here, you won't have to modify your participe passé. So it will change, it won't, it won't change, sorry, it will stay like a accent aigu, okay? Even if it's the singular, the plural, or then the feminine. Okay, it doesn't change, so it will stay like parler. Alright? But, if you use être, like here, il serait allé, okay? So remember, allé was belonging to this group of verbs that require être, okay, to construct this conditionnel passé, all right? Il serait allé. So in that case, you can see that at the end, it's allé like that without anything after. But then, if we look at the feminine form, elle serait allé, you will have to add this E uh, at the end, okay? Remember, E, uh, in most of the cases, when you have to add something, it's the mark of the feminine, okay? So, elle serait allée, okay? But then, phonetically, it doesn't exist, all right? So, it's allé here, and then allé here, the way you pronounce it. But if you want to write correctly, you should put it. And then, the same thing for the plural. We will have to put the plural and then the mark of the plural, 
the thing that we've got to add at the end will be s the good news as well you don't pronounce it as usual in french you write it you don't pronounce it okay so it doesn't change it's aller here aller and then aller okay phonetically the same thing but remember it's just a question of well being correct if you want to write it okay and then logically feminine plural then you should add a mark of the feminine as we had previously and s mark of the plural and guess what you don't pronounce it okay so phonetically it's aller 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 and aller all right but you need to write them okay so let's see now the full thing so je serai allé okay and then if you want to make the liaison it would be more beautiful je serai allé tu serais allé il serait allé elle serait allé nous serions allé vous seriez allé il serait allé elle serait allé all right so that's it and then one example with these reflexive verbs that we saw and then well i just wanted to use this se présenter okay so je me serais présenté tu te serais présenté il se serait présenté elle se serait présenté nous nous serions présentés vous vous seriez présenté il se serait présenté elle se serait présenté all right so if it's not really clear yet for these uh, reflexive verbs i mean the way you should conjugate them i definitely advise you to check the 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 lesson uh regarding these uh reflexive verbs because uh, i've been making one video regarding that so it would be it would be easier for you to understand the way we construct it especially in that case why we put this je me tu te etc okay all right so remember the last thing that you should remember before ending this lesson is that when you construct this conditional passé so in most of the cases you will have to use avoir at the conditional present form then the participle passé and it will give you conditional passé okay in some exceptions so we saw the list of verbs you should really try to remember them by heart i know it's not easy but you know try your best and then the the reflexive verbs okay so for these exceptions we will use être at the conditional present form then the participle passé and it will give you this conditional passé form okay i hope it was clear uh youtube.com slash imagier that's the place where you can find all the videos and then the website is here imagier.net have a great day bye bye Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent and this is Unité 9, Leçon D. And in this lesson we'll discover together what we call in French le futur antérieur. So le futur antérieur is a tense, okay? So I thought it might be useful to introduce it right now because we've been covering quite many tenses so far and this one is quite useful. So the whole... I mean, the way we will construct this uh, video is uh, first we'll see uh, l'utilisation. So when do we use this uh, futur antérieur? And then the second part will be la formation. So how do we construct? How do we build this, uh, this tense? Okay. So the first part will be l'utilisation. When do we use it? And so the main or well, the only concept uh, of this uh, futur antérieur is that, that it will be used to express what we call le passé dans le futur so the past in the future so i know it might sound a bit strange but still it does exist in other languages for instance english so you will see that if you compare it to english it's almost the same thing and the same construction okay so let's first see so if we are here okay this is the timeline so if we are here normally if we want to express what is happening right now we will use the present tense so le présent here okay and then if we want to talk about the future then we'll use this futur simple for instance so the tense we've been seeing uh, previously okay and if we want to talk about 
what happened before so it's still if you look carefully it's still the future for us because we are here it's the it's the present right now so it's still the future but you want to really go that way first the future then the past so in a way it's the past in the future all right so if it's not clear so far let's see one example at the future form so if we want to use this faire faire is to do je ferai mes devoirs mes devoirs my homework okay so this is the sentence at the future form je ferai mes devoirs okay and if we've got the same sentence but at the future antérieur so it will be like j'aurais fait mes devoirs okay so if we, you want to translate it directly see i will do my homework and then here i will have done my homework so if you feel the difference in english between the two sentences well it's exactly the same thing in french okay so strangely if you say je ferai mes devoirs here it's the future okay but then if you use the same structure at this future antérieur i will have done my homework then you've got the feeling that of course it's the future but in a way it's done already okay so it's more certain with this sentence and it, it's exactly the same use that we will have in french as uh, it is used in um, in english okay so now second part formation so let's have a look now first sentence so it's the, the real future je mangerai au restaurant okay and then here we've got j'aurai mangé au restaurant so this second part is the future anterior so if we take the, the time to look a little bit here we can see that we've got first avoir okay at the future and here we've got this participe passé form that we saw previously okay second example if we take the sentence tu regarderas regardez to watch la télévision okay tu auras regardé la télévision so this is the same structure at the future anterior what can we see we can see avoir one more time and it's at the future tense and then here we can see that we've got the participe passé form okay so third example il ira ira so it's coming from aller okay aller is to go au travail at work and then here il sera allé au travail so we can see that here we've got être and then we've got the participe passé form here okay so what can we deduct here we've got avoir participe passé avoir participe passé être participe passé so the rule is like that in most of the cases if you want to construct this future anterior form first you will have for most of the verbs avoir and it should be at the future form and then the participe passé form and you will get your future anterior in some cases you will have to use être at the future form so the future then your participe passé form and you will get the the future anterior form all right so if you saw the previous videos that we've been doing for other composed tenses in french like passé composé plus que parfait etc well it is exactly the same way to construct it it's the only difference is here okay so if you use avoir for one verb at the passé composé form for instance you will use avoir as well at the future anterior the only thing that will change is that for this future anterior form it will be here the future okay and if you use être for some verbs or one verb at the passé composé it will be exactly the same thing but keep in mind that here it should be at the future form okay so remember that for être we've got aller aller is to go arriver arriver to arrive descendre to go down devenir to become entrer to enter to come in monter to go up mourir to die 
naître, born, partir, to leave, rester, to stay, retourner, to return, sortir, to go out, tomber, to fall, and then venir, to come. Okay, so keep in mind that all these verbs will require être. Okay? And then when we talk about être, of course, as usual in French, for these composed tenses, all the reflexive verbs like se something. Okay, so se regarder, for instance, or then s'appeler, or then se présenter. So they will all the time require être. Okay, and we will see in that video that, of course, the way to conjugate them will be a little bit different. Okay. But then, of course, let's see one more time, avoir and être at the future form, because that's the first part you will have to use if you want to construct this future antérieur. And avoir at the future form goes like, j'aurai, tu auras, il aura, elle aura, nous aurons, vous aurez, ils auront, elles auront. Okay, so one more time, j'aurai, remember, a and o together will produce this o sound, a and e, e, aurai, alright, then tu aura, final s not pronounced, aura, il aura, elle aura, okay, nous aurons, final s not pronounced, o and n together, nasal, on, a, u, o, Auront, all right, and then if you want to make this beautiful link, the little liaison between the two, it would be perfect. Nous aurons, okay. Here, same thing here. Vous aurez, all right. O and then a z at the end will give you this a sound. Aurez, all right, and then this little link, this little liaison between the two. Vous aurez, okay. Then il auront, final T not pronounced, O and together, on, auront, okay, and then the link between the two, ils auront, elles auront, all right, so, j'aurai, tu auras, il aura, elle aura, nous aurons, vous aurez, ils auront, elles auront, all right, then now for être, je serai, tu seras, il sera, elle sera, nous serons, vous serez, ils seront, elles seront. All right, so let's see it one more time. Keep in mind that when we've got a like that, you really pronounce it e. Uh, so, serait, okay, I together, e, serait. Okay, the first S is quite strong, uh, se, serait. All right, then, tu seras, final S not pronounced. Tu seras, il sera, elle sera, nous serons, so final S not pronounced, then O, N, on, serons, vous serez, a Z together at the end, et, serez, alright, ils seront, final T not pronounced, and then you get this nasal, on, seront, elles seront, alright, so one more time, je serai, tu seras, il sera, elle sera, nous serons, vous serez, ils seront, elles seront. Alright. So, remember that the second part should be what we call this participe passé form. I've been making a big, big, big video concerning the par participe passé. So, if you really want to work on that, uh, it, is, it, it will be more... Um, uh, full of examples, okay? Uh, right now here, in this video, I will only cover first here, as we've got the first group, so regular, ending with a R, and it's quite easy because it will become E, like that, okay? So, parler, a R, will become parler, your participe passé form. Regarder, ending with a R here, regarder, a accent aigu, okay? And even this aller verb, so it doesn't belong to the first group, because it's quite tricky when you come to, to conjugate it. But even this one is quite easy for this participe passé form, because it's a accent aigu like that. Okay, so all these 
verbs from the first group will become parler, regarder, aller, so like that for the participle passé form, okay? Verbs from the second group, so ER, remember not all the ER verbs uh, belong to the second group, so be, be careful. And so examples like choisir, and it will become choisi, finir, fini, unir, uni, all right? So all these verbs will become like that, choisi, fini, uni. So this is the participe passé form, so the second part that you should put in your futur antérieur. Okay, so let's see now the third group. So it's a tricky, tricky group. So as I said, I've been making a video and uh, you, you've got more examples, but still. So main subcategories, if you want, in a way. So the one that will end with U. So like here and here. So connaître, connu. Connaître is to know. Voir, to see, vu. Okay, then ending with I. Partir, to leave, parti. Rire, to laugh, ri, then the one ending with i, t, écrire, to write, écrit, dire, to say, di, okay, and the one ending with i, s, mettre, to put, mi, and then prendre, to take, pri, all right. An example now with parler. J'aurais parlé, tu auras parlé. Il aura parlé, elle aura parlé, nous aurons parlé, vous aurez parlé, ils auront parlé, elles auront parlé. All right, so as we saw, first you've got this avoir at the future form, then you get your participe passé here, okay aura, then participe passé, etc. So I wanted to put this uh, accent aigu like that, just to show you that in a normal structure. So when you've got your subject and then your verb, okay, and if you conjugate it, it with avoir, so it will be exactly the same rule as we had for all the compost tenses in French. You don't need to put anything at the end of your participe passé form if the structure is simple like subject and verb all right but if we conjugate it with être like it is here the case with aller aller is to go remember and it requires être so what you can see it that it's that il sera allé here you've got the masculine and singular form so you will put this uh, accent aigu like that without anything. But if you've got here the feminine form, elle sera allée, you will have to add this mark of the feminine at the end of your participe passé form. Okay? You don't pronounce it, but still you need to write it. Okay? So remember a mark of the feminine singular. If you've got the plural, like it's the case here, here, ils seront allés et s, like that. So you will put this s, you don't pronounce it, but still you need to put it. Okay? Elles seront allés. Here you've got the feminine form and it's the plural, so you've got this e uh, mark of the feminine, then you've got this s mark of the plural. Same thing here, you don't pronounce it, but you need to write it. Okay? So let's read them. Il sera allé, elle sera allée, ils seront allés, elles seront allés. All right. So let's see now how it go for the full thing. So je serai allé. Okay. So I did put this e uh, like that just to make it possible to put the feminine. All right. Tu seras allé. Il sera allé. Elle sera allée, nous serons allés, vous serez allés, ils seront allés, elles seront allés. Ok, so one more time. Je serai allé, tu seras allé, il sera allé, elle sera allée, nous serons allés, vous serez allés, ils seront allés, elles seront allés. 
And now we saw at the beginning of this video that all the reflexive verbs require as well être, okay, but then remember that the conjugation it is a bit bit more tricky because you've got to use these meute, etc. So let's see how they go when you put them at the futur antérieur. Okay? So je me serai présenté, tu te seras présenté. Il se sera présenté, elle se sera présentée, nous nous serons présentés, vous vous serez présentés, ils se seront présentés, elles se seront présentées. Ok? So you can see that as we conjugate these verbs with être, well it will respect exactly the same rules, so we've got to put a uh, as the mark of the feminine when needed. S mark of the plural when needed here we've got nous so it's the plural vous as well okay and then a s like for here elle so feminine plural so a and s a for the feminine s for the plural okay so let's read them one more time je me serai présenté tu te seras présenté il se sera présenté elle se sera présentée nous nous serons présentés, vous vous serez présentés, ils se seront présentés, elles se seront présentées. So, keep in mind that if you want to construct this future antérieur, it should be first avoir at the future form, then your participe passé and you will get a beautiful future antérieur. In some cases, être au futur plus participe passé and then you will get your futur antérieur. I hope it was clear. If you want more videos, then youtube.com slash imagier and then more material can be found at this address, imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye bye. Le subjonctif. Okay, so it's quite important. And then as usual, we introduce, when we introduce a mode or a tense, then we'll divide the video in two parts. The first part will be L'emploi, so when do we use le subjonctif, and then the second part will concern la formation, so how do we construct this subjonctif. But let's first see l'emploi, so when do we use le subjonctif. And so we'll use le subjonctif when we want to express une obligation, une volonté, une possibilité, un doute, un sentiment, une appréciation, un jugement. Okay, so that's the idea. So if you want to express une obligation, some, something you have to do, une volonté, something you want to do, une possibilité, possibility, un doute, a doubt, un sentiment, a feeling, une appréciation, appreciation, and then un jugement, a judgment. So in these cases, we'll use after this verb, the subjunctive. Okay, so let's see first une obligation. So for example, we'll have this verb falloir and then the construction falloir que. So you will see that when we talk about the subjunctive, each time we will have after the verb, we will have que and then the following verb will be at the subjunctive form. Okay, so that's the concept. All right, so for instance, if we have a look at these uh, sentences, sorry. So, falloir, it's to need, to have to, okay? Il faut que tu écoutes, all right? Il faut que tu écoutes, all right? And then in that case here, so we'll see a bit later, of course, how to make it, but still, you've got this verb, écouter, and this form is the subjunctive, okay? Il faut que tu écoutes. Il faut que les étudiants travaillent. All right. Il faut que les étudiants, and then here you've got the verb, travailler, to work, and this form is the subjunctive. Okay? So, so far it doesn't look that difficult because if you look carefully, it looks like something that we encounter a long time ago when we started to learn French, maybe unit one or unit two, okay? But then we'll see that a bit later. So, une volonté, something you want to do, and then, well, the verb that normally we tend to use is the verb vouloir, vouloir, to want, okay? Vouloir, que, will be followed by 
le subjonctif. For instance, je veux que mon frère vienne me voir. All right? Je veux que mon frère, my brother, here you've got the form, uh, la subjonctive form of venir, venir to come, me voir, see me. Okay? And then, le directeur veut que les employés arrivent à l'heure. So, le directeur, the director, veut que les employés, the employees, arrivent uh, to arrive à l'heure on time. Okay? And in that case, arriver, to arrive here, it's the subjunctive form. Okay? So, une possibilité, possibility. So, let's see what we've got. The structure could be être possible que. Okay? To be possible. Hein? Donc, être possible and then que, as usual, remember. So, for instance, il est possible que mes amis viennent ce soir. Okay? Il est possible que, so it could be translated like, it is possible that, okay? mes amis, my friends, and then venir here to come, so this form here is the subjunctive form, ce soir, tonight. So in that case, you should put your verb here at the subjunctive. Un doute, a doubt. So let's see what we've got. And the structure. So, être sûr, to be sure. Okay? But then, of course, you should put the negative form of this, to be sure. So, ne pas être sûr que. Okay? Because you want to express a doubt. So, je ne suis pas sûr qu'il parle anglais. Okay? So, I'm not sure that... And then, il, he, parler, to talk, to speak, anglais, English, okay? And here, you've got your verb, parle, and this form is the subjunctive, okay? Let's see the next one, un sentiment, a feeling, okay? So, for this sentiment, let's see what we've got. So, we could have avoir peur que, okay, to be afraid that, avoir envie que, Well, it's, it could be translated as to want, okay, to fancy. Être désolé que, to be sorry, that. Être content, to be happy, satisfied, que. Okay, all right. For these structures, then you should make a subjunctive after. So they should be followed by une forme subjunctive. Okay, and then let's see une appréciation. Une appréciation, for instance, we could have this... Préféré, to prefer, préféré que, okay, aimer mieux, mieux is better, aimer, to like or to love, better that, okay, aimer mieux que, and then these structures should be followed by une forme subjonctive, okay, and then un jugement, judgment, so it could be, c'est important que, it's important that, il est dommage, que, il est regrettable que, and they should be followed by a subjunctive form. All right? Be careful. The following verbs. Croire, to believe. Penser, to think. Trouver, to find. Especially when you, you, when you express your, your opinion. Okay? To find, I find that. Être sûr. Okay? So, these verbs are normally followed by the indicative form. So, all the tenses we saw so far, okay? But then, when you put these verbs at the negative form, then they should be followed by the subjunctive, okay? So, keep that in mind. So, croire, penser, trouver, être sûr. If you want to use these verbs and put them at the negative form, they should be followed by the subjunctive. Okay? Let's see now how we'll make this subjunctive form. And so, the tricky thing normally when we talk about the subjunctive is that you will have two different parts. Okay? So, the important thing is that you must know by heart, of course, the present form so of the verb that we saw a long time ago, okay? So, because the, the idea is that you will have to use this il at the plural form here, okay? And this form of the present 
will help you to build the forms of the subjunctive for je, for tu, for il, for elle, for il, and for elle. Okay, so the, f the form of your verb at the present, at the third person of the plural, will help you to construct the subjunctive form for all these persons here. And that's the difficulty because, of course, for nous and vous, well, you will have to use the nous form of the present to construct nous and vous. And that's the tricky thing of the subjunctive. So that's the reason why in make many cases students tend to, s tend to say that, oh my god, it's too difficult. It's just because we've got two different ways of making, well, the form for je, tu, il, elle, il, and elle, and then nous and vous. But then don't be afraid because in most of the cases you will see that it's quite easy. All right? So, you know what? I will take a tricky verb. Just to start, we'll take a tricky verb and after that you will think you will think that the rest is really easy. So let's take prendre for instance and so as I told you the idea is to take the present form of the verb okay and the first one so that we should take is the plural so third person of the plural and it goes like il prenne okay prendre is to take il prenne so that's the present form okay for il and then We've got nous prenons, okay? Because remember, we're using this nous pronom form. We'll use it for nous and for vous of the subjunctive, okay? So we can spot first the ending because we know that ENT is the ending for il, and then ONS is the ending for nous. And of course, what we'll do is we'll take them away. So we'll put the endings away and we'll keep only this first part here and the first part here. And so what we'll do is we'll take this first part, okay, so the part that we took away from this il form, all right, and then we'll put je. Je, so we take it back, have a look, it goes here. And we put the ending. The ending for E will be E. For JE, sorry. The ending for JE will be E. Okay? The ending for TU will be ES. The ending for IL, L will be E. And the ending for IL, L at the plural form will be ENT. Okay? If you look carefully it's not that strange I mean these endings are quite common and we've been we've been encountering these endings you know previously if you think about the, the present form then it looks a bit familiar okay so je prenne tu prennes il prenne elle prenne il prenne et elle prenne then phonetically as usual remember we've got only one form here it is exactly the same form, so we pronounce it the same way, but of course, as usual, we write it differently. Okay? So keep in mind that ending for je is e, ending for tu is es, ending for il, elle is e, and ending for il, elle at the plural form is ent. Okay? So it's the first part, okay? Because if you remember, we had as well this part from nous. Okay, and as I told you, the difficulty of the subjunctive is just because we will have a difference of construction for nous and vous. And so, in that case, we'll take this first part here, we put it here, and we put the ending E O N S. Yon. And the ending for vous is ye. So we get nous prenions, vous preniez. All right? So if we think carefully, ending E-O-N-S for nous, E-E-Z for vous. Okay, if, in, if you remember, it looks quite familiar because it's the ending as well for the imparfait form that we saw a while ago. Okay, so let's have a look now, the full thing. So 
que je prenne, que tu prennes, qu'il prenne, qu'elle prenne, que nous prenions, que vous preniez, qu'il prenne, qu'elle prenne. And this is the reason why students are a bit worried usually at the beginning, just because as we saw, we've got two constructions, two different constructions. So for the first part here and here, and the second part for nous and vous. Okay, but I took this special verb, prendre, to take, on purpose because I thought that it was quite difficult. So, you know, now you can see the way to make it. And after that, well, first, we'll see back again one more time the ending. So, e, e, s, e, i, o, n, s, i, o, z, e, n, t. All right, but then, now, we'll see the verbs from the first group. So, regular groups ending with a er. After that, we'll see the second group, regular group, ending, verbs ending with er. Remember, not all the er verbs, but still. After that, we'll see verbs from the third group. After that, we'll see irregular group, uh, irregular verbs. And then finally, we'll finish with être and avoir. Okay, so let's see now the first group. And you will see that it's quite easy because we get que je parle, que tu parles, qu'il parle, qu'elle parle, que nous parlions, que vous parliez, qu'il parle, qu'elle parle. All right, this is the subjonctif. And it's quite interesting because if you take the time to look at it, que je parle, it's exactly the same form as the present form. Que tu parles, same thing. Qu'il parle, qu'elle parle, exactly the same thing as the present form. And then, qu'il parle, qu'elle parle, same. It's like, your, like the present form. Que nous parlions and que vous parliez, it's exactly the same thing as the imparfait. All right? So, normally, and that's the thing, if you watched all the videos, especially the video concerning the present tense and the imparfait, well, you know this subjunctive form already. Let's take an, a second verb. Que j'écoute, que tu écoutes, qu'il écoute, qu'elle écoute, que nous écoutions, que vous écoutiez, qu'ils écoutent, qu'elles écoutent. And it is exactly the same thing. This is like the present, like the present, like the present, and like the present. This is like the imparfait, and this is like the imparfait. Okay? Parler is to speak or to talk, écouter, to listen. All right? So now let's see how it goes for the second group. All right? So second group, I took the classic example, finir, to finish or to end. Que je finisse, que tu finisses, qu'il finisse, qu'elle finisse, que nous finissions, que vous finissiez, qu'il finisse, qu'elle finisse. Okay, so you can see that, well, you've got the endings, E, E, S, E, O, N, E, O, N, S, sorry, E, O, Z, E, N, T. All right. And then, que je choisisse, que tu choisisses, qu'il choisisse, qu'elle choisisse, que nous choisissions, que vous choisissiez, qu'il choisisse, qu'elle choisisse. All right. So the good thing is that for the second group of verbs, well, basically you don't have any difference, any major difference between the je, tu, il, elle, nous, vous, and il, elle. You've got the same first part, okay? You just need to put the endings after. All right? So third group now, and I took the verb partir, que je parte, que tu partes, qu'il parte, qu'elle parte. Que nous partions, que vous partiez, qu'il parte, qu'elle parte. Same thing here, not really difficult because anyway, it is exactly the same form. You just need to add at the end the endings. Part, 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 partions, partiez, part. Let's take another example. The verb mettre, to put, que je mette, que tu mettes, qu'il mette, qu'elle mette, que nous mettions. Que vous mettiez, qu'il mette, qu'elle mette. So you can see that for these verbs, it's exactly the same thing. So actually, the first part will stay the same. You just need to put the endings 
according to what we saw previously. So a s a e o n s e o z e n t. Okay, but then of course we've got some irregular verbs because we're talking about French language. So let's start now. And so the verb faire to do will become que je fasse. Okay, so here you've got the ending, and so it does mean that this first part will stay the same. You just need to change the endings. Que tu fasses a s, qu'il fasse a, etc., etc. All right, savoir will give you que je sache. Okay, same thing here. A uh, is here, but then of course you will take it away, and after that you will put the endings that we saw: a uh, s, a uh, e o n s, e o z, a uh, n t, according to the person, of course. And then pouvoir uh, can will give you que je puisse. Exactly the same thing here. You take the a uh, away, and then you put the endings according to the person. Okay, so remember, fair, uh, sorry, faire, <laughs> to do, que je fasse, savoir, to know, que je sache, pouvoir, can, que je puisse. All right? And then, well, of course, as I did put that, I forgot that. Ending e, e, s, e, i, o, n, s, i, o, z, e, n, t. Of course, we've got some more tricky verbs and aller is usually one of them aller means to go have a look que j'aille que tu ailles qu'il aille qu'elle aille que nous allions que vous alliez qu'ils aillent qu'elles aillent okay sorry i did forget the feminine form here um, okay so que j'aille listen to me aille okay que tu ailles Qu'il aille, qu'elle aille, que nous, and that's the difference here, allions, allions, okay, que vous alliez, okay, I don't make the liaison just for you to listen carefully, alliez, okay, so if you want to make the liaison, que vous alliez, okay, and then qu'ils aillent, and the feminine form, qu'elles aillent, all right, and so the other tricky verb is vouloir, want, Que je veuille, que tu veuilles, qu'il veuille, qu'elle veuille, que nous voulions, que vous vouliez, qu'il veuille, qu'elle veuille. All right. Same thing here. We'll have a quite important difference between the je, tu, il, il, and nous, vous. Okay. Que je veuille, que tu veuilles, qu'il veuille, qu'elle veuille, que nous voulions, que vous Vouliez qu'il veuille qu'elle veuille. And of course, we'll finish with être and avoir because they are usually quite tricky. Être, so to be, will give you at the subjonctif que je sois, que tu sois, qu'il soit, qu'elle soit, que nous soyons, que vous soyez, qu'il soit, qu'elle soit. Okay, so as usual, good news is that soi, 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 and then soi here. You write them differently, but then you pronounce them the same way. Okay, and then soyons here for nous, soyez for vous. So I repeat, que je sois, que tu sois, qu'il soit, qu'elle soit, que nous soyons, que vous soyez, qu'il soit, qu'elle soit. And last but not least, avoir, to have, Que j'ai, que tu es, qu'il est, qu'elle est, que nous ayons, que vous ayez, qu'ils aient, qu'elles aient. All right, so same thing here, est, 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 and est. Phonetically the same, but try to remember how to write them, okay? And then, ayons, ayez. So let's read them one more time. Que j'ai, que tu es, qu'il est, qu'elle est, que nous ayons, Que vous ayez, qu'ils aient, qu'elles aient. Le passé du subjonctif. So remember in the previous video we saw le présent du subjonctif. And in that video or in this video we'll discover together how to make this 
past form of the subjunctive okay so as in all the videos I've been making for the tenses or the modes then it will be divided in two parts the first part l'utilisation or l'emploi l'emploi sorry when do we use it and then the second part will be la formation so how do we construct this passé du subjonctif okay so let's start with l'utilisation and so remember that we will use this passé du subjonctif to express of course something that happened in the past huh? but then the, the expression of le regret la satisfaction la désapprobation and la surprise okay so if you want to express this regret satisfaction désapprobation could be uh, translated as disapproval and then surprise okay so the first one regret okay let's have a look at it and we've got these structures c'est dommage que okay it is a pity that okay and then if you continue with a past structure it should be at the passé du subjonctif dommage que well exactly the same thing but then it's more spoken because you've been dropping the subject and the verb okay so you can use that orally in uh, maybe not in formal situations it would be better to use this c'est dommage que okay and then regretter to regret que okay and after that you should put this passé du subjonctif of course if what comes after should be at the past form all right then we'll see la satisfaction okay so here are the the structures that we could use c'est bien que it is good that je suis content que i am happy that or then just as we had previously content que okay so we just drop the subject and the verb subject and the verb and then in that case it's more spoken less formal and ça me fait plaisir it pleases me that okay so if you want to introduce something in the past after it should be at the passé du subjonctif désapprobation désapprobation and so we could have this ça m'ennuie que it annoys me that ça m'agace que it bothers me that je ne comprends pas que i don't understand that okay and the same thing what's coming after if you want to express something in the past then it should be le passé du subjonctif and last but not least la surprise the surprise c'est bizarre que bizarre bizarre strange it's strange that je ne comprends pas que i don't understand that c'est drôle que it's funny that and if you want to express something after at the past it should be le passé du subjonctif okay so now we'll see how to make this uh, passé du subjonctif and first well the best way will be to have a look at well this first sentence que je mange and it is the subjonctif present form okay and the second one que j'ai mangé this is le passé du subjonctif second example que tu regardes same thing here you've got the subjonctif present and que tu es regardé here you get the subjonctif passé and the third example qu'il aille so it's the verb aller to go and it's the subjonctif present qu'il soit allé and here we've got as well le subjonctif passé so if you have a look at it first what can you spot you can spot that first here and here you've got avoir okay the subjunctif present form and then after that you've got this participe passé here and here and here we've got être and after that we've got the participe passé form so from what you see and so especially now this is unit 10 so i assume that you've been watching uh, the previous videos that we've been making uh, or i've been making uh, concerning the, the, the um, composed tenses and uh, maybe here you can see that actually this passé du subjonctif will be constructed like all 
the compost stances that we saw so far. So, first, avoir, and then it should be at the subjunctive present form. Then you will put your participe passé and you will get your subjunctive passé. Or, in some cases, you will use être at the subjunctive present form, then the participe passé, and you will get your subjunctive passé. So it's basically, it's quite interesting because this passé du subjonctif is not really, really tricky when you think about the way it is made, okay? Because it, it will follow exactly the same rules as we've, been, as we've been seeing so far. So first, if you're not sure, you put avoir, okay? But then definitely you should know the conjugation of avoir at the subjunctive present form. Then you will put your participe passé and you'll get your subjunctive passé. Remember for être, as usual, we're talking about exceptions and here they come. Aller, to go. Arriver, to arrive. Descendre, to go down. Devenir, to become. Entrer, to enter, to come in. Monter, to go up. Mourir, to die. Naître, born. Partir, to leave. Rester, to stay. Retourner, to return. Sortir, to go out. Tomber, to fall. Venir, to come. All these verbs will be requiring être at this passé du subjonctif. Okay, and then, of course, as we saw previously, all the reflexive verbs, so se regarder, s'appeler, for instance, se présenter, they will require être. So as long as you've got these verbs, you know, se something, then you should keep in mind that you will have to construct them with être. And of course, they will behave a bit differently because you will have to add little things, but we'll see that in this lesson, don't worry, okay? So now we should definitely review one more time the subjunctive present form of avoir and être because these are the first forms that we will use to construct this passé du subjonctif, okay? And so avoir goes like que j'ai que tu es, qu'il est, qu'elle est, que nous ayons, que vous ayez, qu'ils aient, qu'elles aient. All right, so remember one more time. Que j'ai, que tu es, qu'il est, qu'elle est, que nous ayons, que vous ayez, qu'ils aient, qu'elles aient. All right, and then être will go like que je sois, que tu sois, qu'il soit, qu'elle soit, que nous soyons, que vous soyez, qu'il soit, qu'elle soit. Ok, and then one more time, just for the fun. Que je sois, que tu sois, qu'il soit, qu'elle soit, que nous soyons, que vous soyez, qu'il soit, qu'elle soit. All right, so try to remember them by heart because especially if you want to construct this passé du subjonctif, this, I mean, these forms are the first one that you will have to put, okay? Normally the second part, well, at this point you should start to remember them. I mean, this participe passé form should be quite okay, but then don't worry, we'll work on that, okay? Because, well, the thing you get to remember when it comes to the participe passé form is that for the first group of verbs, or regular verbs ending with er, it will be quite easy because if we take the verb parler, to talk, to speak, so it's ending with this er, and then this participe passé will be parler with the accent. Okay? Regarder, to watch, same rule, it will end with this er accent aigu. And then even aller, you know, this tricky verb from the 
third group, Ali means to go, even this one is quite easy when it comes to the participe passé because it will be aller. Second group of verbs, not all the ER, remember, but then regular and they're quite easy to make because the verb like choisir, to choose, so ending with ER, will become choisi. Okay? Finir, to finish, to end, will become fini. All right, and then unir to unite will become uni. All right, so e air will become e. Of course, the third group of uh, verb is quite tricky. I've been making a video regarding this participe passé thing, so if it's not clear for you, I would advise you to to watch this this video. But then, well, some subgroups, but of course they don't include everything. But so far, let's let's do that. So, u, connaître, to know, will become connu. Okay. Voir, so o i r, will become vu. U. All right. So, i, partir, will become parti. Rire, so i r e, will become ri. Okay. And then the i t. Phonetically, you pronounce i because final t is not pronounced, but still, écrire. To write, écrit. By the way, partir is to leave, rire is to laugh. Okay, so écrire to write will become écrit. Dire to say will become di. All right, and then es now. Final s not pronounced, but still you need to write it. Mettre, for instance, e double t r e will become mi es. Prendre, e n d r e will become pri. All right, but then if you're not sure, as I said, watch the video because it will be uh, useful. And then let's take the verb parler as we had, uh, and let's put the passé du subjonctif form. So it go like that: que j'ai parlé, que tu es parlé, qu'il est parlé, qu'elle est parlé, que nous ayons parlé, que vous ayez parlé, qu'ils aient parlé, qu'elles aient parlé. All right, so. As we saw, first you put avoir at the subjunctive present form, then you put your participe passé, and you will get here a beautiful passé du subjunctif. Okay, and if you noticed, I've been putting this e accent aigu in orange just to show you that in normal structures like this one, when you've got first the subject and after that the verb, you shouldn't put anything after your or at the end of your participe passé. So even if like here, the subject is feminine, nothing comes after. Okay, so que j'ai parlé, que tu es parlé, qu'il est parlé, qu'elle est parlé, que nous ayons parlé, que vous ayez parlé, Qu'ils aient parlé, qu'elles aient parlé. All right, so that's the passé du subjonctif for the verb parler, to speak or to talk. Okay, but then, of course, we've got some tricky things. And if you remember from the past tenses that we saw, it's exactly the same rule. If we take, well, these verbs that will require être, like you see here, qu'il soit. Aller, okay. Remember, we saw that aller needs to be conjugated with être, like here, qu'il soit allé. So here, aller will f will end with a accent aigu like that. But then, if we put the feminine form, so qu'elle soit allé, it will be exactly as we saw for all the other composed tenses. You will have to put at the end of your participe passé the mark of the feminine, and E at the end is the mark of the feminine. If you've got the plural like here, il at the plural form, so soit, and then aller, well, you should put the mark of the plural at the end of your participe passé, and s is the mark of the plural. And last but not least, if you've got like here the feminine plural, so quel soit. Aller. Remember to put at the end of your participe passé first the mark of the feminine, so a, then the mark of the plural s. 
the good thing, as usual in French, is you will pronounce it aller, 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 and aller. So technically, you don't pronounce the final e, you don't pronounce the final s, and you don't pronounce the final e s. But still, you should write them. Okay. So let's see now the full thing for aller, and it goes like that. Que je sois allé, okay, I won't make the liaison just to make it more clear, okay, que je sois allé, que tu sois allé, qu'il soit allé, qu'elle soit allé, que nous soyons allés, que vous soyez allé, qu'il soit allé, qu'elle soit allé. Alright, and now with the liaison, because I know that you want them, que je sois allé, que tu sois allé, remember, no liaison when we've got these two. Qu'il soit allé, qu'elle soit allé. Que nous soyons allés, que vous soyez allés. Qu'il soit allé, qu'elle soit allée. Alright? And then, now we can see these famous um, verbs, uh, reflexive verbs, okay, so the one that we saw with the s something, okay, que je me sois présenté, okay, so it will go like that, que je, and then remember for these reflexive verbs, you've got to put this me, so for je, me sois présenté, okay, que je me sois présenté, que tu te sois présenté, okay, so we'll have to add this te, Qu'il se soit présenté, qu'elle se soit présentée, que nous nous soyons présentés, que vous vous soyez présentés, qu'il se soit présenté, qu'elle se soit présentée. All right, so remember, here, so you've got the option of the feminine, same thing here, so here the masculine, because it's il, he, here you get the feminine because it's elle, she, all right. Here you get the plural form, plural form, and then masculine plural, so e accent aigu s, and then e accent aigu e s for the feminine plural here, qu'elle se soit présentée. Okay? All right. So, if there is one thing to remember, it is the following. If you want to construct this passé du subjonctif, first you will have to put avoir at the subjonctif présent, then your participe passé, and you will get your subjonctif passé. In all these exceptions that we saw, être subjonctif présent and the participe passé, and you will get your subjonctif passé form. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. Apprenez le français avec Vincent. And this is Unité 17, Leçon L. And in this lesson, we'll see together le passé simple. So this video will be divided in two parts. The first one will be covering l'utilisation, so when do we use uh, le passé simple, and the second one will cover la formation, so how do we construct this passé simple tense. So we can start right now with l'utilisation, okay? And well, the main thing when we think about le passé simple, well, the first thing it's a tense uh, from the past, and then utiliser à l'écrit. So, in most of the cases, you will see or you will encounter this passé simple form uh, at, the written, at a written form. Okay, so dans la littérature, dans les récits historiques, dans les contes, dans les journaux. Okay, so in most of the cases, we will see this passé simple forms in literature, dans la, dans la littérature, Historical stories, les récits historiques, fairy tales, les contes, and then newspapers, les journaux. Okay? And then keep in mind that it, it is quite rare à l'oral, assez rare à l'oral. So, dans le passé, in the past, of course, and you will express with le passé simple, une action, un fait, un événement. Okay, so it will be used in the past to express une action, an action, un fait, a fact, and then un événement, an event. Keep in mind that 
you don't have any connection with um, well, the time when you say or when you tell this thing at the past. Okay, so pas de connexion avec le moment de l'énonciation. And the last thing is that normally the person who will express this uh, passé simple form will be somehow uh, exterior to the story. So la personne est extérieure au récit. Okay, so keep that in mind. If you want to express in the past une action, un fait, or then an événement, okay, don't have any connection with the time when the person is telling this past form, okay, and then the person who is actually telling this past form is somehow exterior to the story, okay? So, this is now how we will construct la formation du passé simple. And you will see that it's a bit tricky, so I've been making some groups and then subgroups, but then uh, here are the groups. So, the first one is, well, the first group of regular verbs in French, you know, ending with a R, okay? And for this group, well, the endings will be for je. A I, and then for tu, A S, il, elle, A, nous, A accent circonflexe, M, E, S, vous, A accent circonflexe, T, E, S, il, elle, at the plural form, E accent grave, R, E, N, T. Okay, so you've got here your endings for the first group of verbs, so the regular verbs, A, I, A, S, A, A accent circonflexe, M, E, S, A accent circonflexe, T, E, S, E accent grave, R, E, N, T. Okay? And let's see now the endings for the group, of the second Sorry, the verbs of the second group and the regular verbs in IR, okay, so you will have for je, IS, and then for tu, IS, for il, elle, IT, for nous, I accent circonflexe, MES, vous, I accent circonflexe, TES, and then il, elle, at the plural form, IRENT. Okay, so you get these. There are the endings for the verb, the regular verbs from the second group, ER. Okay, so ES, ES, IT, IMES, ITES, IRENT. Okay, don't forget the circumflex here and here. So let's continue now. And we'll discover now, so it's a bit more tricky. Um, so we're not talking about uh, groups and subgroups, but we'll talk about uh, the verbs that will have their participe passé, so past participles, in i en i. Okay, so remember, we're not talking about all the verbs in er, for instance. And then je, so it will end with es. Tu, it will end with es. Il, elle, it will end with it. Nous. I accent circonflexe MES, vous, I accent circonflexe TES, il, elle, I, R, E, N, T. So, of course, you can tell me that, well, these endings are exactly the same as we saw previously. And yes, of course, uh, because, well, all the regular verbs from the second group in IR do have their participe passé in E like that, okay? But in this case, we're mostly talking about, and we'll see a few examples, uh, about the verbs from the second group that do have their, their uh, participe passé in E, okay? So let's continue now with these groups. So we're talking about the verbs ending with O, E, R, but then, of course, as usual, I'm honest with you, <laughs> and we're not talking about all the verbs, but most of them, okay? And the endings will go like je, US, tu, US, il, elle, UT. Okay. Nous, U accent circonflexe, MES, vous, U accent circonflexe, TES, il, elle, 
U-R-E-N-T. Okay, so keep in mind these endings. So U-S, U-S, U-T. U accent circumflex M-E-S. U accent circumflex T-E-S. U-R-E-N-T. And we're talking about the verbs ending with O-E-R, but remember, not all the verbs. Let's see now another category. O-E-R-E. And then, as usual, remember, we're not talking about all the verbs, but most of them. And the endings will go like je, us, tu, us, and then il, elle, ut, okay. nous, u accent circonflexe, mes, vous, u accent circonflexe, tes, il, elle, urent. Okay, so remember, verbs ending with o, i, r, e, but not all verbs, us, us, ut, U accent circonflexe MES, U accent circonflexe TES, URENT. Okay, then we will continue with the verbs that do have their participe passé en U. Okay, remember not all the verbs, of course, but most of them. And the endings will be JE, US, TU, US, IL, ELLE, UT, NOUS, U accent circonflexe MES, vous, U accent circonflexe TES, il, elle, U, R, E, N, T. Ok? And then, verbs like tenir and venir, they are a bit tricky, so be careful. We're talking about these two verbs, but then, of course, all the composed verbs based on tenir and venir. Ok? So let's see now. And then, je, I, N, S, tu, INS, il, elle, INT, nous, INMES, vous, INTES, il, elle, INRENT. Ok? So, we'll now see a few examples, quelques exemples. And now I will focus on the pronunciation. Okay, so let's start with the first group. So, les verbes en ER, and then the example is parler. Okay? Je parlais, tu parlas, il parla, elle parla, nous parlâmes, vous parlâtes, ils parlèrent, elles parlèrent. Okay, so one more time. Je parlais, tu parlas, il parla, elle parla, nous parlâmes, vous parlâtes, ils parlèrent, elles parlèrent. And now, the second group of verbs ending with ER, so the regular one, and I've been choosing this finir, to finish, or to end, example. Je finis, tu finis, il finit, elle finit, nous finîmes, vous finites. Il finir, elle finir. Ok, so one more time. Je finis, tu finis, il finit, elle finit, nous finîmes, vous finites, il finir, elle finir. And now let's see all the verbs that will have their participe passé en I. Remember, it was not all the verbs, so I've been choosing this suivre verb to follow. Je suivis, tu suivis, il suivit, elle suivit. Nous suivîmes, vous suivîtes, ils suivirent, elles suivirent. Ok, so one more time. Je suivis, tu suivis, il suivit, elle suivit. Nous suivîmes, vous suivîtes, ils suivirent, elles suivirent. And now... Let's see a few verbs. So, like, attendre, so it's to wait, dire, to say, entendre, to hear, faire, to do, mettre, uh, to put, sorry, and then voir, to see. J'attendis, tu dis, il entendit, elle entendit, nous fîmes, vous mites, ils virent, 
Elvire. Ok, so, j'attendis, tu dis, il entendit, elle entendit, nous fîmes, vous mites, ils virent, elles virent. All right, so, let's continue now with this. Group, remember, verbs ending with O, E, R, but we said that it was not all the verbs, so I've been choosing this recevoir example, to receive, recevoir, and it goes like that. Je reçus, tu reçus, il reçut, elle reçut, nous reçûmes, vous reçûtes, ils reçurent, elles reçurent. Okay, so one more time. Je reçus, tu reçus, il reçut, elle reçut, nous reçûmes, vous reçûtes, ils reçurent, elles reçurent. And now the verbs ending with O, I, R, E. And remember, I said that we're not talking about all the verbs, but most of them. And for this example, I've been taking boire. Boire is to drink. Je bus. Tu bus, il but, elle but, nous bûmes, vous butes, ils burent, elle bure. Ok, so one more time. Je bus, tu bus, il but, elle but, nous bûmes, vous butes, ils burent, elle bure. And now the verbs that will have their participe passé en U. So I've been choosing this lire verb, so lire is to read. Je lus, tu lus, il lut, elle lut, nous lûmes, vous lûtes, il lure, elle lure. Okay, so one more time. Je lus, tu lus, il lut, elle lut, nous lûmes, vous lûtes, il lure, elle lure. And now, venir, venir is to come, so remember they were a bit tricky. So we're talking about venir and all the verbs that will be formed with venir. Je vins, tu vins, il vint, elle vint, nous vins. Remember it's quite tricky to pronounce that. Vins. Vous vintes, ils vinrent, elles vinrent. Okay, so one more time. Je vins. Tu vins, il vint, elle vint, nous vînmes, vous vintes, ils vinrent, elles vinrent. And then as I said, tenir, so exactly the same thing as we had for venir, so we're talking about tenir, and all the verbs that will be composed based on tenir, okay? So, je teins, tu teins, il teint, elle teint. Nous tâmes, same thing, same tricky uh, phonetical thing here. Nous tâmes, ok? Vous tintes, il tint, elle tint. One more time. Je tins, tu tins, il tint, elle tint. Nous tâmes, vous tintes, il tint, elle tint. And this is it for le passé simple. So I will do few videos right after this one and we'll see uh well of course être and avoir and few other important uh verbs at the passé simple form okay i hope it was useful have a great day au revoir et à bientôt le passé surcomposé Okay, so, le passé surcomposé, and we start right now. So, in this video, first, we will see l'utilisation of le passé surcomposé, and then after that, we will see la formation. Okay, so first, when do we use, so, l'utilisation, and then la formation, how do we construct this passé surcomposé. Okay, so we can start now with l'utilisation. So keep in mind that we will use le passé surcomposé pour exprimer des faits qui se sont passés avant d'autres faits passés 
exprimé au passé composé. So it may look a bit difficult that way, but then let's say that you want to express something in the past, and normally you will use this passé composé form that we've been using and we've been seeing previously. Okay, but then if you want to express some facts that have been happening before these past events, in that case, well, you will use or you should use le passé surcomposé. Well, in actually, it's not really the case because we've been seeing that we've got this plus que parfait tense, okay? And to be totally honest, yes, the second thing here, this passé surcomposé is nowadays quite rare. So, utilisation assez rare, okay? But then keep in mind that l'utilisation est plus fréquente dans le sud de la France. So if you travel, if you go in the south of France, then they will tend to use it a bit more often. But it is quite rare nowadays because people tend to use this plus que parfait instead of le passé surcomposé. Okay, but anyway, it does exist. Uh, it is used. Okay, so we will see in this video how to make it. All right, so let's see the timeline. And then let's imagine that this is the present. Okay, so this is now. And then we want to express something in the past. So we will use le passé surcomposé. Sorry, le passé composé here. Okay, and then if you want to, as I said, express something that happened before this passé composé, so it's le passé surcomposé. Okay, so the present, le présent, and then the past, le passé composé, and even before, le passé surcomposé. Okay, so here is an example. Dès qu'il a eu bu son café, il est parti au travail. Okay, so it's a strange sentence maybe, but then let's have a look at it. And the first thing that we should spot here is this a eu bu. And then the second thing is a parti. Okay, so the first thing that we can see here, this a eu bu, okay, it's actually this passé surcomposé form. And then the second form here is the passé composé. Okay, so dès qu'il a eu bu son café, so this thing has been happening before, so he has been drinking his coffee. Then, okay, something that happens after, but it's still in the past, okay. Il est parti au travail. Okay, so the first event, okay. Au passé surcomposé, and the second event here, au passé composé. So let's see how to make this passé surcomposé. Few examples first. So, first sentence, j'ai mangé au restaurant, it's le passé composé, okay, as we saw, you use whether avoir or être, okay, in most of the cases, you will use avoir. You put that at the present form, and then after that, you put this form that we call participe passé. Okay, so this is here, le passé composé. Okay, so if you want to make le passé surcomposé, so it's an example here, j'ai eu mangé au restaurant. So you can see that the difference between the two, actually this manger form, so the participe passé, this past participle, doesn't change. So, no changes here, okay? But this is this first part that will change. So, if you can notice, in that case here, you get avoir, and it's at the present form. And if you look carefully here, you have get avoir at the passé composé form. Okay, let's take a second example here. Tu as regardé la télévision. Okay, so exactly the same concept, the first sentence here is at the passé composé, so you get this avoir at the present tense, and then you get here the participe passé. Tu as regardé la télévision. I've got some problems with my mouse, sorry. And then the second sentence, tu as eu regardé la télévision. Okay, so we can see that it's exactly the same situation. 
we've got this regarder form and it's exactly the same so you don't really need to bother about that and it's the first part that will change okay because here for the passé composé you've got this verb avoir at the present and here for this passé surcomposé well actually you've got avoir at the passé composé form okay and it will be exactly the same thing in the last example but then I wanted to take a verb so aller that will require être you know at the passé composé okay so il est allé au travail okay and in that case remember exactly the same thing so you put être instead of avoir because that is one of the these uh, exceptions that will require être to make the passé composé it is here at the present form and here for this passé surcomposé well we will see exactly the same thing we've got aller here so the participe passé doesn't change and then this first part here well actually it will be the verb être at the passé composé form okay so I hope it's clear I know it's a bit difficult at the beginning but then keep in mind that the way to make this passé composé it's actually quite simple so first you will use this avoir okay in most of the cases of course and then this avoir should be at the passé composé then you will put as we saw this participe passé form and you will get your passé surcomposé remember in some cases as we saw for aller you will use être but still it's exactly the same concept être should be at the passé composé form then you will put your participe passé so exactly the same concept and you will get your passé surcomposé form okay so let's see the exceptions so we saw that we've got aller we do have arriver so aller is to go arriver arrive descendre descend or go down devenir to become entrer to come in or to enter monter to go up mourir to die naître to born or be born partir to leave rester to stay retourner to return or to come back sortir to go out tomber to fall and then venir to come okay so remember that all these verbs will require être okay and obviously some verbs will be constructed based on these verbs okay so uh, logically they will also require the verb être okay remember also that uh, well the verb as we say les verbes pronominaux okay so the verb that will be constructed with this se in front of them se regarder or then it could be s apostrophe if you had a, a vowel s'appeler se présenter so all these verbs les verbes pronominaux will also require être for this passé surcomposé form okay so let's see now and let's try to refresh a little bit um, avoir and être at the passé composé because that's the part that we will we'll need to use when we construct this passé surcomposé so avoir at the passé composé goes like that j'ai eu tu as eu il and then elle <coughs> or on even a eu nous avons eu vous avez eu ils ont eu elles ont eu okay so it will be our first part of this passé composé uh, sorry passé surcomposé and then the second part will be être so in some cases as we saw previously and être goes like that j'ai été tu as été 
il, elle, en den, on a été, nous avons été, vous avez été, ils ont été, elles ont été. Okay, so same thing here. So it will be our first part uh, for the exceptions that we saw uh, previously. Remember that the second part, so we talked about this participe passive form. Well, actually, it will be quite simple for the regular verbs. So the first group of regular verbs is the well, or is the group that will include all the verbs ending with a er. Exception is aller, as we saw. But then it's actually quite simple. Have a look at that. You get the infinitive form here, ending with a er. er. Okay, so this is the basic form of the verb. Okay, you just take this a uh, er away and you will replace it with a uh, accent aigu. And here you get this participe passé form. So, parler will become parler. Phonetically it's the same, but then you write it differently. Regarder will become regarder. Okay, same rule. And then aller will become aller. So, even if aller doesn't belong to the f this first group of regular verbs, actually, when we talk about the construction of this participe passé form, well, it's quite regular as well. So, nothing tricky there. The second group, okay, remember, the verbs ending with er, okay, but not all of them, because it's a common mistake, not all of them are following these rules, because we've got another group of er, er verbs that will belong to the third group, so irregular verbs. But, I mean, this, actually, we're talking in that case about the regular verbs ending with er, okay? And it will be quite simple as well, because, have a look, you've got the basic form here, choisir, er, okay? And then you just take it away and you replace it with i. So you will get, so choisir will become choisi. Then finir will become fini, unir will become uni. All right. So it's not really difficult. So if we're talking about the regular verbs from the first group here and the second group here, they are quite easy to make if we talk about uh, this participe passé form. Okay. So let's see now the third group. Few exceptions, few categories and subcategories. So, but then connaître will become connu. Okay, voir will become vu, partir, even if it belongs to the third group, well, it's actually quite simple, it will become parti, rire will become ri, écrire will become écrit, dire will become dit, mettre will become mi, prendre will become pris. Okay? So let's see few examples or we'll take that the verb parler so quite regular verb and we'll put that at the passé surcomposé okay so remember we had the first part here so avoir at the passé composé so we've been saying that and then the second part this participe passé you just put it here j'ai eu parlé tu as eu parlé il elle on a eu parlé nous avons eu parlé. Vous avez eu parlé. Ils ont eu parlé. Elles ont eu parlé. Okay? And you can see that as we are constructing this passé surcomposé form with avoir, in all the cases, we will keep this uh, accent aigu here. So we don't put any mark for the feminine or for the plural here, okay? So it will be all the time a here. But then remember that it will behave exactly the same way as all the compound tenses. If you use a verb like aller, for instance, that will require être and not avoir. So in that case, you will have to put like here, the feminine form at the end of your participe passé. So remember that a uh, is the mark of the feminine. Okay? So, il a été allé, but then you don't put anything because it's the masculine, so you should put the basic form. In that case, you've got elle, 
okay and then well it's a feminine singular feminine you should put this a uh, at the end of your participle passé phonetically you don't hear it it goes like aller so exactly the same thing as here or the same way so elle a été allée so if we respect the logic then for the masculine plural we should add at the end this s so s is the mark of the of the plural okay so ils ont été allés and then logically as well if we put the feminine and the plural form so l so first we will add a mark of the feminine then s mark of the plural and you will get elles ont été allées so the good news is that phonetically it's aller here aller 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 so it's the same you don't pronounce this uh, final uh, you don't pronounce this final s here okay so it's it's exactly the same but keep in mind that if you want to write correctly you should put them so if we put the full form j'ai été allé okay with the option of the feminine tu as été allé option of the feminine as well il a été allé so in that case it's the masculine form elle a été allé and here it's the feminine form nous avons été allés so you put the plural at the, at the end vous avez été allés ils ont été allés okay and in that case you've got the plural only so masculine because you you don't have anything else and then elles ont été allées here you've got the feminine plural so e uh, and s so let's remember how to construct this passé surcomposé well actually the first part and in almost all the cases it will be avoir okay and avoir should be at the passé composé form then you will put your participe passé form as usual for all these compound tenses in French so and you will get this passé surcomposé okay in some cases as we saw we can use être okay but then the rules stay the same so it should be at the passé composé then you will put your participe passé form and you will get your passé surcomposé okay so keep in mind that it is quite rare nowadays uh, i mean to be really honest it is quite rare but still that's the way it works and then if you read if you hear any passé surcomposé well you will know what they are okay le passé antérieur okay so we can start right now and normally when i introduce uh, tenses in videos i divide the video in two parts the first part will cover l'utilisation so when do we use le passé antérieur and the second part will cover la formation how do we construct how do we make this passé antérieur okay so let's see first now l'utilisation and well the important thing when we talk about le passé antérieur is that we will use that pour exprimer des faits qui se sont passés avant d'autres faits passés and then they should be exprimés au passé simple so clearly what does it mean it means that this passé antérieur form is the past in the past okay so when you want to express something that happened before another uh, event that happened in the past then in that case you should use le passé antérieur but keep in mind that it works in connection to le passé simple so it means that if you want to use that orally if you want to use uh, this past in the past concept normally we've got well the tense that I've been introducing previously and that's what we call le plus que parfait okay uh, but then in some cases if you want to use le passé simple and if you want to use something that happened before then you should definitely use le passé antérieur okay so keep in mind that uh, l'utilisation est rare so you will use it quite rarely maybe never okay but you will probably encounter few passé antérieur l'utilisation est à l'écrit 
so it's mostly written and then l'utilisation est dans le langage soutenu so we are talking about formal french in that case we're not really talking about the french that you will use orally with friends or family okay because in that case you will use other tenses of the past so let's imagine that this is now so this is the present c'est le présent okay and let's say that you want to express something that happened in the past and you want to use le passé simple okay so it's, it's possible of course um if you don't know how to make the passé simple well i've been making little videos on that so little video on that so you can you can check it if you want Okay, so first idea, you want to express something in the past at le passé simple. So keep in mind that the rule is quite strict because if you want to express something that previously happened, uh, in that case, you get to use le passé antérieur. Okay, so first, le présent, then first thing in the past, you want to use le passé simple. Keep in mind that this is le passé antérieur. That should be used if you want to express something that happened even before. Okay, so this is the past in the past this is the concept an example here so dès qu'il eut bu son café il partit au travail so you can see here that you've got the verb boire and it's at the passé antérieur form so first he decides to drink his coffee then he decides to leave and to go to work okay so in that case you've got this passé simple here so that's the whole concept first you've got this passé antérieur then you've got the passé simple everything happens in the past okay but then you wanted to use first in that case le passé simple and then you've got no choice but you've got to use le passé antérieur for this past in the past concept so now let's see how do we construct le passé antérieur and I've been deciding to put few examples okay so the first sentence will be always at le passé simple and the second sentence will be at le passé antérieur so le passé simple je mangeais au restaurant okay so the verb is manger to eat and then you will get je mangeais au restaurant second one tu regardes à la télévision regardez is to watch tu eus regardé la télévision and then we've got il alla au travail il fut allé au travail and if you take the time to look at these forms you can spot and you can see that we've got two parts so it means that it is a compound tense okay and then as usually in French when we're talking about compound tenses then the second part here is always the same it's le participe passé so this past participle okay so Manger will become manger, regarder, regarder, aller will become aller. Okay, and the first part here, as usual in French, we will use whether avoir or être. And in this case, when we're talking about le passé antérieur, then avoir should be, or être should be at the passé simple form. Okay, so this is the concept and this is the way we will construct this passé antérieur form. First you get avoir, and it must be conjugated at the passé simple. Then you will put your participe passé, this past participle, and you will get le passé antérieur. Okay, in some cases, remember, we will use être. Same thing here, you get to conjugate être at the passé simple form. Then you will get, uh, then you will put le participe passé, and it will give you le passé antérieur. Let's see now the verbs that will require the use of être. And we're talking about aller, to go, arriver, to arrive, descendre, to go down, devenir, to become, Entrer, to enter, to come in. Monter, to go up. Mourir, to die. Naître, to be born. Partir, to leave. Rester, to stay. Retourner, to return, to come back. Sortir, to go out. Tomber, 
to fall and then venir to come. So all these verbs will be conjugated at le passé antérieur and then more generally at all the compound tenses uh, in French with être. And then we've got the verbs like se regarder, s'appeler, se présenter, okay, so to watch, to look at oneself, uh, to call oneself, to present oneself. So these verbs are called les verbes pronominaux. And all les verbes pronominaux will as well require être at le passé antérieur or more generally at all the compound tenses in French. So let's see now how um, avoir uh, is conjugated at uh, le passé simple because that's the first part that we will use in this passé antérieur form. And it's ju, tu eu, il, elle, on eu, nous eûmes, vous eûtes, ils eurent, elles eurent. Okay, so ju, tu eu, il eu, nous eûmes, vous eûtes, ils eurent. Then être goes like that. Je fus, tu fus, il fut, elle fut, on fut, nous fûmes, vous fûtes, ils furent, elles furent. Ok? Je fus, tu fus, il fut, nous fûmes, vous fûtes, elles furent. Ok? So this is the first part. Remember that you get to use when you construct this passé antérieur. Then the second part is what we call le participe passé. And keep in mind that when we're talking about the verbs from the first group, regular verbs ending with er, then they will be quite easy because you just need to take away this er form and you put a accent aigu instead. Phonetically it's quite easy because it's exactly the same thing. Parler will become parler. Regarder will become regarder. And even this tricky verb aller to go, remember you don't conjugate that uh, like the verbs from the first group, but even this one, when it comes to this participe passé form, then it's quite easy because it goes like aller. Okay? Parler, parler, regarder, regarder, aller, aller. All right. So the second group of regular verbs, so ending with er. Remember, we're not talking about all the verbs ending with er, but they, they will be quite easy as well because you just take away this er thing and you just replace it with e. Okay. So choisir will become choisi, finir will become fini, unir will become uni. Okay. Etc. Etc. After that, of course, we've got the tricky ones. Uh, so verbs from the third group. So we can make some subgroups, but then be careful. You should definitely learn them by heart, but if it helps. So les participes passés qui finissent avec U, that will end with U, for example. Connaître will become connu. Voir will become vu. Okay, and then in E as well. So partir will become parti. Rire will become ri, okay, and then in it, écrire will become écrit, dire will become di, and then in es, mettre will become mi, and prendre will become pri. Okay, so connaître to know, connu, voir to see, vu, partir to live, parti, rire to laugh, ri, écrire to write, écrit. Dire to say, di, mettre to put, mi, prendre to take, pri. Okay? A few examples now, or I will conjugate the verb parler at the passé antérieur form, and you will get j'eus parlé, tu eus parlé, il eut parlé, elle eut parlé, on eut parlé, nous eûmes parlé, vous eûtes parlé, ils eurent parlé, Elles eurent parlé. Okay, so you can see that we've got our participe passé that will end with E. Okay? For a good reason, because remember that when we use être, then something will happen, like, on, like for all the compound tenses in French, when we put être, then it means that 
at the end of your participle passé here, you will have to put whether the feminine or the plural form if needed, of course. In that case, you get L, so it's the feminine singular. So you should add this E at the end for the feminine singular. And then in that case, you get the plural, masculine plural. Then you should put S for the masculine plural. And here you get the feminine plural, and you should add this E uh, and S for the feminine plural. Okay, keep in mind that, um, well, it's actually quite easy because phonetically they are, they are the same. All right, but then you should add this final E uh, for the feminine, final S for the plural, and final E uh, S for the feminine plural. And it goes like that. Il fut allé, elle fut allé, ils furent allés, elles furent allées. Okay, so let's see now all the forms. Je fus allé, tu fus allé, il fut allé, elle fut allé, nous fûmes allé, vous fut allé, ils furent allé, elles furent allé. So I will make now the liaison because I know that some of you want me to make the liaison all the time. Je fus allé, tu fus allé, il fut allé, elle fut allé, nous fûmes allé, vous fûtes allé, ils furent allé. Elles furent allées. Okay, so remember that you put E uh, when needed for the feminine form, you put S when needed for the plural form, and then E uh, S for the feminine plural form. Okay? So keep in mind that le passé antérieur, one more time, you get avoir conjugated at the passé simple, then you will have your participe passé form, and you will get this passé antérieur form. In some cases, as we saw, we'll use être, same thing, at the passé simple, then your participe passé, and it will give you le passé antérieur, l'imparfait du subjonctif. And here it is. So let's start now. You get to keep in mind when we talk about l'imparfait du subjonctif, actually three things. The first one will be utilisation rare. So it means that it is really rare to see l'imparfait du subjonctif. The second thing, un temps qui disparaît petit à petit, so little by little, it is less and less used, okay? And the last thing, that utilisation exclusivement à l'écrit, of course, it is quite tricky to say always, but then uh, in most of the cases, you will see this imparfait uh, du subjonctif written. Uh, quite few persons are using this imparfait du subjonctif orally, okay? But then, well, it's possible, everything is possible, so, but then in most of the cases, it will be written, okay? So, it is rare, it tends to disappear, and in, it's mostly uh, written, okay? And the other thing that you should keep in mind is that if we're talking about the verb être, to be, and avoir, to have, then in these cases, you can see all the persons, okay? But in most of the cases for the other verbs, people will use only the third form. So, whether the singular or the plural form, but then the third form, okay? So now, let's imagine that we've got a sentence, okay? And in this sentence, we've got la principale, and we've got une subordonnée, okay? So, if we have l'imparfait de l'indicatif, dans la principale, so in the first part, then normally we should put in the subordonnée l'imparfait du subjonctif, or then le plus que parfait du subjonctif. Okay, so that's the way it should be normally done. Okay, so imparfait de l'indicatif, imparfait du subjonctif. Let's give an example now. Il fallait qu'il parla. Okay, so you can see that in this first part here, you've got il fallait, so it's imparfait de l'indicatif, and then normally you should put in this subordonnée qu'il parla, and in that case you've got l'imparfait du subjonctif. Okay? But then, as we saw previously, it's always, well, it's also possible to have in the principal l'imparfait de l'indicatif, and in the subordonnée, le plus que parfait du subjonctif, and we will get, il fallait qu'il eût parlé. Okay, so, exactly the same thing here, we've got imparfait de l'indicatif, and in the subordonnée, we've got qu'il eût parlé, and this form here is actually what we call plus que parfait du subjonctif. Okay? 
let's take now another situation in which we've got so same thing a sentence so we've got la principale and then we've got la subordonnée okay if we have le présent du conditionnel dans la principale then normally we should have le présent du subjonctif dans la subordonnée or then l'imparfait du subjonctif dans la subordonnée but let's say that in most of the cases, this form won't be used, okay? Even if it would be possible and it would be correct, but then in most of the cases, people will skip that and they will stay with présent du conditionnel and then présent du subjonctif. So, let's have it here right now. Présent du conditionnel in the first part, dans la principale, il faudrait... And then you will have qu'il parle, okay? So you can see that here it's the subjunctive présent. If you would like to have this il faudrait qu'il parla, so as I said, it should be or it could be correct, but then let's say that in most of the cases you won't see that anymore, okay? Because people tend to use the previous example that I gave you, in which you've got in the principal le présent du conditionnel and in the subordonné le présent du subjonctif. So remember, as we saw, utilisation de toutes les personnes pour être ou avoir, and then for the other verbs, then we will only use this third person from the singular or the plural. Okay? So let's see now. Il désirait que vous parlassiez encore. So basically, it's uh, correct. <laughs> it's il désirait que vous parlassiez encore. But then we don't use that. Okay, it's too heavy now. So the question is, should we use il désirait que vous parliez encore? And well, clearly, it's not an option because it is not correct. So the only way that we would have a correct sentence would be to modify it and get il désirait vous entendre parler encore. Okay, and it's quite interesting here because if you look, well, the first one was correct, okay, but then it's not used anymore. I mean, this imparfait du subjonctif here for vous, as you saw, it's quite heavy and it's not used, okay. The second one, uh, in here, it's not possible because it's not correct, okay? And then, this is the reason why we tend to use a structure. And if you look, this structure is quite interesting because actually we won't use this subjunctive form, okay? So, there are some ways to avoid using le subjunctif and one of the reasons is that in this video, is well, in this situation, it's because l'imparfait du subjunctif is not used anymore and so we try to find some ways to avoid using this imparfait du subjunctif. So, il désirait vous entendre parler encore. So, souvent possible d'éviter l'utilisation de l'imparfait du subjonctif. So, as I said, it's often uh, possible to avoid using this form of this imparfait du subjonctif, okay? And the last thing, and one more time, as we saw, if you want to use this imparfait du subjonctif, well, keep in mind that it will be for the third person, uh, just because the other forms are really impossible to produce. Not impossible, but quite heavy, and people don't like to use this, this form anymore, okay? Uh, I'm not talking, of course, as I said previously, about avoir and être, because they've got a special, special status. Bonjour à tous, hi everyone, and welcome to Learn French with Vincent, and this is Unité 9, Leçon N. And in this lesson, we'll see together les temps composés, so we won't discover them because uh, I thought it might be uh, useful to take the time to review what we saw so far, especially when we're talking about les temps composés. Composé, so all these tenses that are composed tenses, okay? So, and so far, we've been seeing first le passé composé, then we saw le plus que parfait, 
After that came le futur antérieur, and finally we saw le conditionnel passé. And so the common thing that we have uh, between all these tenses is that they are composed. Okay, so they will be construct the same way, but then of course few things will change. Obviously, the first part that we've get to use avoir and être will change, but then the rest construction with the participe passé will be the same. Okay, so we'll first start with the passé composé. Okay, so and if you remember, the rule was that first we will use avoir. So if you're not really sure, if you don't remember the, 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 if the verb requires être or not, then put avoir. Avoir should be at the present form, then you will put your participe passé form and you will get this passé composé, okay? Remember that in some cases, but we're talking about exceptions or uh, reflexive verbs, you know, these se, blah, 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 so you will have to use être and at the present tense as well, plus le participe passé, and you will get this passé composé, okay? So, of course, it looks simple like that, but then in some cases, and especially after learning so many things, maybe you don't really remember the, the, the conjugation of avoir and être at the present tense. So we'll take the time to review that one more time. So remember, avoir at the present tense goes like j'ai, tu as, il a, elle a, nous avons, vous avez, ils ont, elles ont. Okay, so j'ai, tu as, final S not pronounced, il a, elle a, nous avons, final S not pronounced, and then we make this little link between the two, nous avons, vous avez, a Z at the end will produce this E sound, avez, little link between the two, vous avez, ils ont, okay, final T not pronounced, and then we make the liaison, ils ont, elles ont. All right, so this is for avoir at the present tense. And now, être at the present tense. Je suis, tu es, il est, elle est, nous sommes, vous êtes, ils sont, elles sont. Okay, so je suis, final S not pronounced, tu es, okay, so it's quite strange because you get this ES, but then phonetically it's E, all right, quite open, tu es. Il est, exactly the same sound as we had previously, okay, so just remember that you write it like that, but then phonetically it goes like est, elle est, nous sommes, final S not pronounced, vous êtes, little liaison to be between the two and then final S not pronounced, ils sont, final T not pronounced, elles sont, all right, so that's the main, main thing you should remember. Of course, the participe passé, but then we won't cover that in this lesson because we've been, I've been, I mean, I've been making a big, big video on that. So try to search it in the, the channel uh, search engine, and you will find it. Okay. So let's see now. Le plus que parfait. So remember, it was exactly the same rule. So first, avoir. If you're not sure, just put avoir. But avoir should be at the imparfait form. Then the participe passé, so you will get your plus que parfait, okay? And for the same exceptions, we'll have être, at the imparfait form, and then the participe passé, and it will give you the plus que parfait, okay? So for the same reasons, we will see together avoir at the imparfait and être at the imparfait, just to make sure that it's clear for you. And avoir at the imparfait will give j'avais. Tu avais, il avait, elle avait, nous avions, vous aviez, ils avaient, elles avaient. Okay, so, j'avais, final S not pronounced, tu avais, final S not pronounced, il avait, final T not pronounced, elle avait. So, exactly the same phonetical thing here, it's avait. Nous avions, final S not pronounced, and then a little liaison, nous avions. Vous aviez, a Z at the end, et, aviez, and then liaison, vous aviez, ils avaient, so look here, 
E N T, you write them, you don't pronounce them. So you get phonetically AVE. Exactly the same thing that we had here, here, and here. Okay, so it's exactly the same thing that you will pronounce. But then here you make the liaison. Ils avaient, elles avaient. Okay, let's see how être goes. J'étais, tu étais, il était, elle était, nous étions, vous étiez, ils étaient, elles étaient. All right, so exactly the same rule. Remember, final S, here, here, final T, and then here, E and T. You don't pronounce them, so you will get ete, okay, for all these forms, okay. J'étais, tu étais, il était, elle était. Same rule here, final S not pronounced, and then you make the liaison. Nous étions, vous étiez, ils étaient, elles étaient. Okay, make the liaison here as well. Ils étaient, elles étaient. All right, so this is the thing you should remember. Now, the other tense we saw was uh, futur antérieur. And futur antérieur, remember, exactly the same construction, but then... Avoir should be conjugated at the future, the future, and then le participe passé, and it will give you future antérieur. Or then, for exactly the same exceptions and the same cases, you will use être, but then être should be at the future tense, plus le participe passé, and it will give you le futur antérieur. So, what we'll see... We'll see exactly the same thing as we saw previously for the other tenses, so or the other uh, yeah, tenses. So we'll see the future form for avoir and then the future form for être. Okay? And for avoir it will go like j'aurai, tu auras, il aura, elle aura, nous aurons, vous aurez, ils auront, elles auront. Okay, so have a look now. J'aurai, tu auras, final S not pronounced. Il aura, elle aura, nous aurons, final S not pronounced, and then you make the liaison, vous aurez, a Z at the end here, et, aurez, liaison here, vous aurez, ils auront, final T not pronounced, elles auront. Okay? And then, for être, we will get, je serai, tu seras, il sera, elle sera, nous serons, vous serez, Ils seront, elles seront. Okay, so one more time. Je serai, tu seras, final S not pronounced. Il sera, elle sera. Nous serons, final S not pronounced. Vous serez, a Z at the end, et serez. Ils seront, final T not pronounced. Elles seront. Alright, so this is the future tense for avoir and être, okay? And now the last composed tense we saw was le conditionnel passé, and so remember that le conditionnel passé will go like that. So first, as we saw previously, avoir in priority at the conditionnel present form, then you put your participe passé, and you will get your conditionnel passé. Or, for the same cases as we had previously for passé composé, futur antérieur, or then plus que parfait, être, but in that case it should be at the conditional present form, then the participe passé, and you will get your conditionnel passé form. So let's see now uh, uh, how avoir and être are at the conditionnel present, just to refresh your memory, and it goes like that. J'aurais... Tu aurais, il aurait, elle aurait, nous aurions, vous auriez, ils auraient, elles auraient. Okay, so one more time. J'aurais, final S not pronounced, tu aurais, same thing here, il aurait, elle aurait, final T not pronounced, so phonetically exactly the same form here. Nous aurions, final S not pronounced, and then you get this liaison, nous aurions. Vous auriez, a Z at the end, et auriez, and then the liaison, vous auriez. Ils auraient, remember, E N T, you don't pronounce it, auraient, ils auraient, elles auraient. Alright, so this is for avoir, and then let's see, être. Je serais, tu serais, 
Il serait, elle serait, nous serions, vous seriez, il serait, elle serait. Ok, so let's see how it goes. Je serais, final S not pronounced. Tu serais, same thing here. Il serait, elle serait, final T not pronounced. Nous serions, final S not pronounced. Vous seriez, a Z at the end, et seriez. Il serait, so a N T not pronounced. Elle serait. All right. So this is the first part that you should use when you come when you make sorry this uh, conditionnel passé form. Okay. That's it for les temps composés. If you've got some doubts, uh, remember I've been making uh, videos regarding each uh, of these tenses, so it's possible to find them. Uh, if you want more video or other videos, then remember youtube.com slash imagier is here, and then more material if you want to find, uh, well, other things, softwares or pictures or flashcards, imagier.net is waiting for you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Les participes passés irréguliers, because they are quite important, especially if you want to make some uh, compound tenses, or if you want to use some compound tenses, you will have to use les participes passés, and in many cases you will use uh, irregular verbs, so we'll need to cover them right now. So the concept is quite simple, we will first put this verb at the infinitive form, so the basic form of the verb, Then we'll have the translation, la traduction in English. And after that, <coughs> we will have le participe passé. Okay, so the form that we want to remember. So let's start right now. Absoudre. Absou. Abstenir. Abstenu. Abstraire. Abstrait. Accroître. Accru. Acquérir. Acquis. Adjoindre. Adjoint. Admettre. Admis. Advenir. Advenu. Apercevoir, aperçu, apparaître, apparu, appartenir, appartenu, apprendre, appris, asseoir, assis. Astreindre, astreint, atteindre, atteint, attraire, attrait, avenir, avenue, avoir, eu, boire, Bu. Brère. Bré. Bruire. Bruit. Circoncire. Circoncis. Circonscrire. Circonscrit. Chlore. Clo. Commettre, commis, comparaître, comparu, complaire, complu, comprendre, compris, compromettre, compromis, concevoir, Conçu, conclure, conclu, confire, confie, conjoindre,
conjoint. Connaître, connu, conquérir, conquis, contenir, contenu, contraindre, contraint, contredire, contredit. Contrefaire, contrefait, contrevenir, contrevenu, convenir, convenu, coudre, cousu, couvrir, couvert, craindre, Craint, croire, cru, croître, cru, décevoir, déçu, découdre, décousu, découvrir, Découvert, décrire, décrit, décroître, décru, dédire, dédit, défaire, défait, déjoindre, Déjoint, démettre, démis, dépeindre, dépeint, déplaire, déplu, déprendre, dépris, désapprendre, Désappris, déteindre, déteint, détenir, détenu, devenir, devenu, devoir, dû, dire, dit. Disconvenir, disconvenu, disjoindre, disjoint, disparaître, disparu, dissoudre, dissous, distraire, distrait. Éclore, éclos, écrire, écrit, élire, élu, en boire, en bu, émettre, émis, déconfire, Déconfie, émouvoir, ému, empreindre, emprunt, enceindre, enceint, enclore, enclos, enfreindre, Enfreint, enjoindre, enjoint, enquérir, enquis, entreapercevoir, entreaperçu, entreapercevoir, 
entreaperçu, entre nuire, entre nuit, entremettre, entremis, entreprendre, entrepris, entretenir, entretenu, entrouvrir, Entrouvert, éprendre, épris, éteindre, éteint, étreindre, étreint, être, été, exclure, exclu. Extraire, extrait, faire, fait, feindre, fin, folklore, forclos, frire, frit, geindre, Jean participe passé irrégulier. And actually, it will be quite simple, the concept of the video. I will first give you this verb, the infinitive form, so le verbe à l'infinitif. Then I will give you the traduction, the translation in English. And after that, we will finish with the participe passé, so this past participle form. So let's start now. Inclure. Inclus. Inscrire, inscrit, interdire, interdit, intervenir, intervenu, joindre, joint, lire, lu, luire, lui. Main maître, main mie. Maintenir, maintenu. Mal faire, mal fait. Maudire, maudit. Méconnaître, méconnu. Médire, Médi, méprendre, mépris, mettre, mi, moudre, moulu, mourir, mort, mouvoir, mu. Naître, né, nuire, nuit, obtenir, obtenu, obvenir, obvenu, occlure, occlu, offrir, Offert, oindre, oin, omettre, omis, ouvrir, ouvert, paraître, paru, parfaire, parfait. Parvenir, parvenu, peindre, peint, percevoir, perçu, permettre, permis, plaindre, plein, 
plaire, plu, pleuvoir, plu, portraire, portrait, pouvoir, pu, précontraindre, précontraint, prédire, prédit, prendre, prix, prescrire, prescrit, prévenir, prévenu, promettre, promis, promouvoir, promu, proscrire, proscrit, provenir, provenu, rasseoir, rassis, réacquérir, réacquis, réadmettre, réadmis, réapparaître, réapparu, réapprendre, réappris, reboire, rebu, recevoir, reçu, recomparaître, recomparu, reconnaître, reconnu, reconquérir, reconquis, recoudre, recousu, recouvrir, recouvert, Récrire, récrit, recroître, recru, redevenir, redevenu, redire, redit, redécouvrir, redécouvert, réécrire, Réécrit, réélire, réélu, réémettre, réémis, refaire, refait, réinscrire, réinscrit, rejoindre, rejoint. Relire, relu, reluire, relui, remettre, remis, renaître, rené, réouvrir, réouvert. Reparaître, reparu, repaître, repu, repeindre, repeint, repleuvoir, replu, reprendre, repris. Requérir, requis, ressouvenir, ressouvenu, restreindre, restreint, retindre, retint, retenir, retenu. Retraire, retrait, retranscrire, retranscrit, 
retransmettre, retransmis, retraindre, retrain, résoudre, résolu, rétreindre, rétrain, revenir, revenu, revivre, revécu, rire, ri, rouvrir, rouvert, satisfaire, satisfait, savoir, su, souffrir, souffert, soumettre, soumis, sourire, souris, souscrire, souscrit, soustraire, soustrait, soutenir, soutenu, souvenir, souvenu, stupéfaire, stupéfait, subvenir, subvenu, suffire, suffit, surfaire, surfait, suroffrir, surfaire, surprendre, surpris, sursoir, sursis, survenir, survenu, survivre, survécu, suscrire, suscrit, terre, tu, teindre, teint, tenir, tenu, traire, trait, transcrire, transcrit, transmettre, transmis, transparaître, transparu, venir, venu, vermoulé, vermoulu, vivre, vécu et participe passé invariable. So I've been thinking about this thing and then, well, we've been covering the participe passé already uh, a long time ago and we've been seeing that uh, we need them uh, if we want to, 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 to structure or to compose or to make uh, composed tenses. And then in uh, many situations when we put the pronoun at a certain place we get to put at the end of this participe passé whether the feminine or then the plural but then there is a list of uh, participe passé that will actually never change for a good reason it's whether they are coming from verb intransitif or then they are coming from what we call verb transitif indirect and clearly that will give us this list of participe passé Invariable. So it does mean that uh, they will never actually be affected by this feminine thing that you get to put at the end or then the plural thing that you get to put at the end, they will stay the same. Okay, so uh, of course the list was a bit longer that, than uh, what I've been uh, selecting, but then, well, I've been selecting the most used verbs um, that normally uh, students at this level uh, should know or should use. Okay, so that's the reason why the list is quite long, but not as long as it could be. All right, so let's start now with the first one. 
So what I will do, I will read each time first the participe passé here, okay, and then after that I will read the infinitive form, okay? So let's start now. Abouti, aboutir. Aboyer, aboyer. Accéder, accéder. Agir, agir. Appartenu, appartenir. Atterri, atterrir. Bailler, bailler. Bavarder, bavarder. Bondir, bondir. Briller, briller. Capituler, capituler. Circuler, circuler. Consister, consister. Contribuer, contribuer. Correspondu, correspondre. Déjeuner, déjeuner. Déplu, déplaire. Dîner, dîner. Divorcer, divorcer. Dormir, dormir. Durer, durer. Éternuer, éternuer. Été, être. Évoluer, évoluer. Exister, exister. Failli, faillir. Fallu, falloir. Fonctionner, fonctionner. Hésiter, hésiter. Insister, insister. Oops, sorry, mistake here. It should be a air, okay? Lutter, lutter. Marcher, marcher. Mentir, mentir. Naviguer, naviguer. Neiger, neiger. Participer, participer. Patienter, patienter. Persister, Persister. Plus. Plaire. Plus. Pleuvoir. Just one second to remind you, and we saw that previously, that these two verbs, plaire and pleuvoir, share the same participe passé. Okay? So it's not a mistake in that case. They, they just have the same participe passé. Procéder. Procéder. Profiter, profiter. Réagir, réagir. Régner, régner. Résider, résider. Résister, résister. Ressembler, ressembler. Rire, rire. Séjourner, séjourner. Sembler, sembler. Souper, souper. Sourire, sourire. Stationner, stationner. Succéder, succéder. Suffit, suffire. Surgit, Surgir, survécu, survivre, sympathiser, sympathiser, tarder, tarder, trembler, trembler, tricher, tricher, triompher, triompher, voyager, 
voyager. Et les conjugaisons irrégulières, and we'll focus on the verbs uh, from the first group, and then uh, well, a specific category of verbs that will end with whether a, or then a accent aigu, and then une consonne, and then a air. So you get a few examples here. So it could be ending with aider, aimer, ene, été, but then many others as well. But then they will follow the rule that we will see here, okay? Because actually, even if they are regular, they will be affected uh, and they will have slight changes. So I've been taking this amener, amener is to bring, okay? And then, uh, so bring someone. Um, and then we'll see that actually uh, the tenses that, that will have these slight or little changes will be l'indicatif présent, le futur simple, le conditionnel présent, and then le subjonctif présent. It does mean that for all the other tenses, uh, actually, this verb amener will just behave like a normal verb from the first group, so it will uh, follow the same rules of construction. Or construction. Okay? But then for indicatif présent, futur simple, conditionnel présent, and then subjonctif présent, uh, little changes will happen, and that's exactly what we'll see in this video. So we'll start with le présent, and then it will go like j'amène, tu amènes, il amène, nous amenons, vous amenez, ils amènent. Okay? And then what can we see here? We can see that actually je, tu, il, and il will be concerned by this little change, and it's only the accent here accent grave on the top of this e uh, okay and then it will change of course the pronunciation because you will have this a sound open amen okay amen tu amen il amen nous doesn't change nous amenons okay it's a silent her here mute amenons vous amenez exactly the same thing you don't pronounce this e uh, and then here back this change so amen Okay, so remember the only thing that you will have to change or modify will be to put this accent, l'accent grave. Let's see now for the future simple. J'amènerai, tu amèneras, il amènera, nous amènerons, vous amènerez, ils amèneront. Okay, so we can see here that all the forms are concerned and all the forms are modified, but then the modification is exactly the same as we saw previously, so it's just this accent grave that you get to put on the top of this uh, amènerai, amènera, amènera, amèneront, amènerai, amèneront. Okay, let's see now for the conditionnel présent. J'amènerai, tu amènerais, il amènerait. Nous amènerions, vous amèneriez, ils amèneraient. Okay, and it's exactly the same thing. So we'll have the modification, and this modification will affect all the forms. Okay, but it will be exactly the same modification as we saw previously. Just put this accent grave on the top of this uh, amènerait, 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 amènerions, amèneriez, amèneraient. Okay, and let's see now. The last one, le subjonctif présent, and it goes like que j'amène, que tu amènes, qu'il amène, que nous amenions, que vous ameniez, qu'ils amènent. Okay, and we can see that, well, we'll have the modification, but it will affect only je, tu, il, and then il at the plural form, and it will be exactly the same modification, this accent grave that we get to put on the top of this e. Uh, amène, amène, amène. Then for nous, you don't touch it, so amenions, vous ameniez, and then here, modification for il at the plural form, amen. Okay, and that's it. So remember that for this uh, subgroup of verbs, so the, the one ending with e, or then e accent aigu, and then une consonne, and then e r, okay, so the following tenses will have these slight uh, changes. So indicatif présent, futur simple. Conditionnel présent and then subjonctif présent. So for all the other tenses, uh, no modifications, just put and uh, just 
conjugate the verb as it should be conjugated according to the rule uh, that uh, will uh, concern all the tenses. Les conjugaisons irrégulières, and when we're, when we're talking especially about les verbes du premier groupe en CE. Okay, so if you remember correctly, um, well, I told you that when we're talking about the first group of verbs ending with er, we're talking about regular verbs, uh, which is the case, but then we've got some subgroups, um, and these groups actually they will have to be, or the verbs in these groups will have to be slightly modified uh, during conjugation for a good reason, you'll see why okay so um, I wanted to take uh, this verb lancer lancer is to throw something or then to launch something and um, well that's the thing we will have three tenses that will be concerned by these modifications the first one will be le présent then l'imparfait then le passé simple we don't really use that much le passé simple but still it's quite important to actually introduce I mean this tense and to show you I mean what modifications will have okay and then the other thing will be the form of uh, le participe présent which is quite quite useful to to actually see uh, when we're talking about le présent actually the only form that will be uh, affected or modified somehow will be the new form okay and if you take one minute to actually think about that normally if we would respect the the, the rule so for the regular verbs uh, we should write the the, the verb like l a n c so without the c d here and then o n s okay but then phonetically we would get l'encon okay nous l'encon and then the problem that we would have would be um, well difficulty to make uh, the connection with this form and the infinitive because the infinitive is lancé okay and if we get this uh, form l'encon actually it would be quite difficult to really make the connection between them so just to get the sound s that we've got in the infinitive well we only need we only need to put this cd okay and we'll get this nous lançons Alright, so and that's the only modification we will have to make for this uh, group or subgroup, if you want, of uh, irregular verbs. Okay, it will be exactly the same thing for the imparfait form. Okay, so I, I did put this je and tu because they have the same ending here, but it will be exactly the same thing. So instead of just putting this c here, you will put this cd and you will get je lançais, tu lançais. Okay, for the passé simple, it will be exactly the same thing. So we only need to put this CD and we'll get il lança, all right? And then participe présent, exactly the same modification. Just need to put the CD to get the S sound, lançant, all right? So let's have a look at the imparfait form. And the imparfait form goes like je lançais, tu lançais. Il lançait, nous lancions. So you can see that here, you don't need to put the CD because when you combine C and E, well, it's the sound S, okay? Vous lanciez, so exactly the same thing for the same reason. And then, il lançait, okay? So you can see the modifications here, 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 and here, okay? Uh, for the present form, je lance, tu lances. Il lance, nous lançons, so as I said, it's here, okay, vous lancez, il lance. So clearly for all the forms, all the other forms, you don't modify it, I mean you just respect the, the rule, the when we're talking about the, the regular verbs, okay, but then the only thing is here, as I said, for nous, then in that case you get to put la cédille. And then let's see le passé simple, je lançais. Tu lança, il lança, nous lançâmes, vous lançâtes, il lancèrent. So you can see that there is only one form that won't be affected by that, but then all the others will need to be modified with the CD, like here. Okay? So remember, présent, imparfait, passé simple, and then participe présent will be the tenses and the forms uh, affected by these 
uh, or these modifications. From the conjugaison irrégulière, and we're talking about the verbs from the first group ending with G E R. Okay, because if you remember carefully, uh, when I introduced the first group, it was a long time ago, I know, uh, but then uh, I said that, uh, well, actually the first group of verbs are uh, regular verbs, and that's true, I mean, for the endings it, it won't be really a problem, but then uh, for some subgroups we will have some modifications, and um, this is the one of the subgroup that we will talk about, uh, verbs ending with G E R. And we'll see the reason why we've got these modifications. Uh, I wanted to take uh, a simple and uh, useful verb. So it's bouger. Bouger is to move. Okay. And then we will see that uh, the tenses that will be affected by uh, these modifications uh, will be uh, le présent, l'imparfait, and then le passé simple. Okay. And then we'll have this participe présent form that will be also affected by that. Okay, but then when we're talking about le présent, actually the good news is that is that we'll, we'll have only one form that will be affected or modified, and this is the nous form. Okay, so if you have a look, and if we normally, if we would respect the rule, we should write it like nous, and then b o u g. So without this e here, o n s. But then let's. Just imagine that the E is not here. Uh, phonetically, we would get the, s the sound bougon, nous bougon. And then the problem is that uh, it would be difficult to actually ma make a connection with the infinitive bougon, okay? And the infinitive is bouger, je, 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 okay? So g and j, all right? So the only way or the only possibility that we've got uh, to make actually this phonetical connection with this form and the infinitive is by uh, adding this e uh, here, okay? And so when you put this e uh, here, you will get the sound bougeon, okay? And in that case, you know what verbs we are, or what verb we are talking about. Nous bougeons, all right? So it's only this new form that will be affected at the present tense. If you're talking about imparfait, then, well, I did put this uh, je and tu, actually, but then we'll see a bit later that we'll have more forms affected by it, but then for the same reason and with the same tool, <laughs> so adding this e, uh, uh, we will actually have the connection, phonetical connection with the infinitive, je bougeais, tu bougeais, all right? For the passé simple, it will be exactly the same thing, so I did put this il, but then we'll see that other persons are concerned as well. Il bougea. Okay, so exactly the same thing here for le participe présent, so we will get bougeant. All right, so let's have a look now at the present form. Je bouge, tu bouges, il bouge, nous bougeons, vous bougez, il bouge. Okay, so as I said, you can see that we've got only the new form that will be modified because all the other forms, well, they are exactly respecting the rules uh, of the regular verbs. And then imparfait, it will go like je bougeais, tu bougeais, il bougeait, nous bougions, vous bougiez, il bougeait. So if you look carefully, it's actually quite interesting because nous and vous are not concerned by that, just because if you remember, when we combine G and I, we get the sound J, okay? So that's the reason why we don't need to add this E uh, here, okay? But then it's here, it's here, it's here, and it's also here for the plural, okay? Let's have a look at the passé simple now. Je bougeais, tu bougeas, il bougea, nous bougeâmes, vous bougeâtes, ils bougèrent, okay? So if you look carefully, then it's here, it's here, it's here, it's here, and it's here. So actually there is only this il at the plural form that won't be affected or modified. Okay? So remember, le présent, l'imparfait, le passé simple, and le participe présent will be the forms or tenses that will be affected or modified. Les conjugaisons irrégulières, and especially we're talking about the first group of verbs ending with er, and in that case, we'll see the verbs that will end with o, y, e, 
faire, ok? Just wanted to take a useful verb and, well, envoyer, to send, is actually quite useful. And so we'll see in this video that when we're talking about these verbs, so this subgroup of uh, verbs uh, that normally should be uh, regular, uh, well, they will be irregular, but, and it will only affect l'indicatif présent, le futur simple, le conditionnel présent, and then le subjonctif présent. Okay, so we'll see the conjugation uh, together. So for the indicatif présent, let's see, so it will go like, j'envoie, tu envoies, il envoie, nous envoyons, vous envoyez, ils envoient. Okay, so you can see that actually here, 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 and here, it's a bit different than normally it should be if we would uh, respect the rule. So let's see now for the future simple. J'enverrai, tu enverras, il enverra, nous enverrons, vous enverrez, ils enverront. Okay, so now you can see that there is a big difference between what we saw, I mean, for the, the main group of uh, verbs from the first group and this one, because actually, you know, enverrai form is quite far, in a way, from the envoyer, okay? So let's see now, conditionnel présent, well, clearly it will be the same construction or the same idea of construction, so same uh, modification, j'enverrai. Tu enverrais, il enverrait, nous enverrions, vous enverriez, ils enverraient. Ok? And then let's see now le subjonctif présent. Que j'envoie, que tu envoies, qu'il envoie, que nous envoyons, que vous envoyez, qu'ils envoient. Ok? And then you can see that here, 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 and here. It's a bit different than what it should be normally if we would respect the rule uh, for the verbs of the first group. So remember, when we're talking about the verbs ending with O, Y, E, R, then the following tenses will be affected and modified. So indicatif présent, futur simple, conditionnel présent, and then subjonctif présent. Okay? Uh, check the video one more time if you really need to remember it, because uh, it can be tricky in, in some way, because especially for the futur simple and conditionnel présent, I mean, phonetically, indicatif présent and then subjonctif présent, they don't really change that much. But then, if you've got to talk or if you've got to speak with someone, futur simple and conditionnel, I mean, modification is quite big. Les conjugaisons irrégulières and will especially uh, work on les verbes that will end with U, Y, E, R. Okay? Les verbes en U, Y, E, R. And I wanted to take, well, well, simple verb. The verb is essuyer, so it means to wipe. Okay, essuyer. And we'll see that, uh, well, this verb, like the others that will end with uh, U, Y, E, R, uh, well, it will be a bit difficult or they will change a little bit. So even if it's a regular verb, so it belongs to the first group of verbs ending with uh, R, okay, but then you'll see that few modifications uh, will be found. So we're talking about l'indicatif présent. We will see that le futur simple will be concerned as well. And then conditionnel présent and subjonctif présent, okay? So the for the other tenses actually these verb will behave like all the other regular verbs ending with a uh, r okay so let's see now le présent and we'll have a look so it's je suis tu essuie il essuie nous essuyons vous essuyez ils essuient Okay, and if you look carefully, then you can see that for the first form here, actually this Y uh, is changing, and now it's E, okay? Same thing here, same thing here, and then it will be exactly the same thing here, okay? For nous and vous, actually, it does respect uh, the rule uh, for the first group 
or for the verbs you know, ending with a r so actually you don't really modify it you just put this y and after that the ending so y and the ending okay but then keep in mind that for the je tu il and then il in that case you can see that this y will be changed and it will be replaced by i okay so let's see now uh, le futur simple j'essuierai tu essuieras il essuiera nous essuierons vous essuierez ils essuieront Okay, so it's exactly the same thing that, I mean, you can see that this Y will be changed and modified and it will be replaced by this I. And you can see that in that case here for the future simple form, it does concern all the forms. So, je, tu, il, elle, nous, vous, il, elle. Okay, so let's see now for the conditionnel présent. J'essuierai, tu essuierais. Il essuierait, nous essuierions, vous essuieriez, ils essuieraient. And it's exactly the same modification, so this Y is changed and modified with I here, so, and it does affect all the persons. Okay, and so finally, let's see the subjonctif présent. Que j'essuie, que tu essuies, qu'il essuie. Que nous essuyons, que vous essuyez, and then qu'ils essuient. Okay, and exactly as we had for the uh, the present form of the indicative, so the one we saw in um, just the first one. So same thing here. So y is changed and replaced by i i i. Okay, for je, tu, and il, and same thing for il at the plural form. So that's the only modifications you need to you need to do, okay? Endings are staying the same, and they don't change at all, okay? So let's remember that if you've got these verbs, so ending with u, y, e, r, well, indicative present will be slightly modified as we saw, future simple, conditionnel present, and then subjonctif present as well. Les conjugaisons irrégulières, and then we'll focus on les verbes en a, y, e, r. Okay, so the verbs that will end with a, y, e, r. Okay, so I want you to take, uh, well, a classic verb that we tend to use quite often, and it's payer, to pay. Payer, okay, so a, y, e, r here. And we'll see that uh, even if it belongs to the first group, so ending with e, r, so regular group, um, well, this verb will be slightly modified and uh, it will concern the following tenses um, indicative present, futur simple, conditionnel present, and then subjunctif present. So it does mean that for all the other tenses, actually, this verb will follow the rule. Uh, so uh, the endings will be the same and then the way we construct and the way we build um, the forms uh, will be the same. But then for indicative present, future simple, conditionnel present and then subjunctive present. So we'll see together that we'll have a slight uh, or little changes. Okay, so we'll start with the present. So, je paie, tu paies, il paie. Nous payons, vous payez, il paie. All right. So what you can see is that this y actually um, well disappears and is replaced by this i. All right. So like here. So it does concern the je, tu, il. Actually, for nous and vous, you can see that it's here, so it's not a problem. So it does follow the normal rule of conjugation for the first of uh, so the verbs of the first group. Sorry. And then for il, the plural form, it's exa exactly the same as we have for we have for je, tu, and il. So you change this y and you put i instead. Okay. So that's the way it should be done, and that's the way I was taught when I was uh, young. But then the good news is that actually you've got another option for this payé group or a y a group because it is now allowed to write them or to write these verbs 
like that as well okay so it's a good news because it does mean that in fact it is possible to write them like you should write them you know when you because they belong to the first group of uh, of verbs so it can goes like like that so je paie tu paies il paie nous payons vous payez and then il paie okay and in that case it's quite funny because we tend to make the difference maybe in pronunciation uh, so between this one je paie and then some persons can pronounce je paye okay tu paie tu payes il paie il paye here it's the same nous payons nous payons vous payez vous payez il paie and then il paye okay and then future simple so as you can see i've been dividing the screen in two so it does mean that it will be the same so we'll see first the official and the, the well the way uh, l'académie française would like us to write it or to say it so je paierai tu paieras il paiera nous paierons vous paierez and then il paieront okay so you can see that it's exactly the same thing this y uh, is gone and it's replaced by this e or each forms okay but then it's also possible to use this je paierai tu paieras il paiera nous paierons vous paierez ils paieront okay so it is possible and it is an option for you to keep this y and actually it won't be considered as a mistake or it shouldn't be anyway and then let's see now le conditionnel présent so je paierai tu paierai il paierait, nous paierions, vous paieriez, il paierait. Okay, and it's exactly the same thing. So it is allowed to use this. Je paierais, tu paierais, il paierait, nous paierions, vous paieriez, il paierait. Okay, so it's a good news. It's possible to use this Y and to keep it if you want it, or then if you want to respect the official rule <laughs> you change this y and you put this e instead okay and let's see now le subjonctif présent que je paye que tu payes qu'il paye or then if you want que je paye que tu payes qu'il paye que nous payons que vous payez qu'il paye okay subjonctif présent que je paye or que je paye que tu payes que tu payes qu'il paye que nous payons que vous payez qu'il paie or qu'il paye okay so it's actually quite good i mean because you you can see that you've got two options which is quite rare in french normally you get one rule and then you should respect it so for this verb actually and for the group of verbs that will end with a y e r so you will have whether the option of respecting the rule and then make these little modifications or then if you want to keep well the the normal rule for the uh, air verbs then it's possible okay so keep in mind that indicative present future simple conditional present and subjunctive present are concerned les conjugaisons irrégulières and we'll see especially the verbs that will end with a l a r okay so verbs from the first group so regular verbs but then in some cases they will be a little bit uh, modified okay but then uh, first thing that we should uh, say is that the verbs like appeler, s'appeler, rappeler, se rappeler or then interpeller actually they won't follow the rules or the rule that we will see in this video okay so I will make a special video right after this one okay and then we'll see how uh, they are modified because they are modified as well in um, in a way okay but then they don't follow the rule that we'll see in this video okay so I wanted to take uh, these verb gelé to freeze okay and so we'll see that uh, so gelé will actually be slightly modified okay and it will concern the following tenses indicative present futur simple conditionnel present and then subjonctif present for all the other tenses actually gelé will be conjugated like it should be or like the other verbs from this first group are conjugated okay so we'll start with the present and we'll see the forms je gèle 
tu gèles, il gèle, nous gelons, vous gelez, il gèle. Ok? And so, what you can see is that je, tu, il, and then il will be concerned by these changes, and in that case, we are only talking about this accent grave. Ok? So, you will have to remember to put this accent grave on the top of E for je, tu, il, and then il at the plural. If you look carefully for nous and vous, you don't change, you don't modify it. You just keep it like that and respect the rule of conjugation or construction of conjugation. Okay? So, je gèle, tu gèle, il gèle, but then nous gelons, vous gelez, il gèle. Okay? So, let's see now for the future simple. Je gèlerai, tu gèleras, il gèlera, nous gèlerons, vous gèlerez, ils gèleront. Okay? So in that case, you can see that all the forms are concerned, and it's exactly the same modification, so you need to put this accent grave on the top of the first E uh, here. J'ai, okay, so gèlerai, gèlera, gèlera, gèleront, gèlerai, gèleront. Okay? So if we're talking about conditional present now, We'll see the forms. Je gèlerai, tu gèlerai, il gèlerai, nous gèlerions, vous gèleriez, il gèlerait. Okay? So what you can see, it's that it's exactly the same modification and it will concern all the forms. So accent grave on the top of the first E. Uh, gèlerai, 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 gèlerions, gèleriez, gèlerai. For the subjonctif present now, it will go like Que je gèle, que tu gèles, qu'il gèle, que nous gelions, que vous geliez, qu'il gèle. Okay, so the modification will concern je, tu, il, and then il at the plural form for nous and vous. Actually, you don't modify it, you just keep it like that and you put the normal endings for the subjonctif present. So, que je gèle, que tu gèles, qu'il gèle and then qu'il gèle. Okay? So, remember that if we're talking about these verbs, so the verbs of the first group ending with E, L, E, R, the following tenses will be modified, so indicatif présent, futur simple, conditionnel présent, and then subjonctif présent. Les conjugaisons irrégulières, and we'll see especially, uh, well, the verbs like appeler, s'appeler, rappeler, se rappeler, and then interpeller. All these verbs, okay, so ending with e, l, e, r, but then uh, these verb, the verbs that will uh, be part of the appeler family verbs, uh, okay. So we'll see that uh, I took this example, so appeler, okay, and then we'll see that the following tenses will be concerned by these changes. So we're talking about indicatif présent, futur simple, conditionnel présent, and then subjonctif présent. It does mean that for all the other tenses, actually, uh, appeler will follow the rule of um, the construction of conjugation of the verbs from the first group, so ending with a r, okay? But then for these tenses, uh, it will be a bit, a bit different, okay? And that's exactly what we'll see in this video, and we'll start, of course, with the present form. So, it will go like, j'appelle, tu appelles, il appelle, nous appelons, vous appelez, Ils appellent. Okay? So if you look carefully, you can see that the je, tu, il, and then the il and the plural form, forms are concerned because you can see that we will double the L. Okay? You will have to put another one. Okay? And then it's quite interesting because as we saw in the previous video, if you have you know, double L like that, it will affect the pronunciation of the E. Uh. So actually it will open the sound and that's the reason why you, you will get the sound E. Okay? J'appelle, j'appelle. Alright? So, j'appelle, tu appelles, il appelle. And now, for nous and vous, actually they follow the rule, but then you keep only one L. So that's the reason why you will get the sound appelons. Okay? This E. Uh, is mute or silent, appelons, and then vous appelez.
okay and back to this open e okay so double l so appel all right so j'appelle tu appelles il appelle nous appelons vous appelez ils appellent okay so keep in mind that je tu il and then il are concerned and that you've got to double you've got to double the l mm -hmm. let's see now for le futur simple j'appellerai tu appelleras il appellera nous appellerons vous appellerez ils appelleront so in that case for the future simple all the forms are concerned and it's exactly the same modification that we saw previously so you get to double the l okay and it will affect all the forms so remember you double the l so it does open the sound of this e and you get a okay j'appellerai tu appelleras il appellera nous appellerons vous appellerez ils appelleront Okay, let's see now le conditionnel présent. And it will be exactly the same thing, the same thing, sorry. J'appellerai, tu appellerais, il appellerait, nous appellerions, vous appelleriez, ils appelleraient. Okay, so same thing, you get to double the L and it does concern all the forms, if you can look carefully. So j'appellerai, tu appellerais, il appellerait, nous appellerions, vous appelleriez, Ils appelleraient. Okay. And last but not least, le subjonctif présent. Que j'appelle, que tu appelles, qu'il appelle, que nous appelions, que vous appeliez, qu'ils appellent. Okay. And here you can see that je, tu, il, and il, at the plural form, are concerned by that. So, same thing, you double the L, and then you open the sound of this E uh, here. J'appelle, que tu appelles, qu'il appelle. And then here, you just keep the form and you just keep the normal ending. Que nous appelions, que vous appeliez, qu'ils appellent. Okay? So remember that for all the verbs that belong to this family of uh, verb appeler, okay, appeler, s'appeler, rappeler, se rappeler, interpeller as well, okay? So they will follow. Uh, the rule, of course, for the endings, but then they will have some modifications, and as we saw, it will concern l'indicatif présent, le futur simple, le conditionnel présent, and then le subjonctif présent. Les conjugaisons irrégulières, and we'll see especially the verbs that will end with a T, E, R. Okay, so regular verbs from the first group ending with a R. Okay, but then we'll see that these verbs will be, in some cases, a bit... A bit different. Um, and then uh, what we should keep in mind is that the verbs uh, from the, f well, these family of verbs, so you can see that uh, jeter is the first one, and after that all the verbs uh, will be based on jeter, so déjeter, interjeter, projeter, rejeter, and then surjeter. Well, these verbs won't follow the rule, or uh, they will actually follow another rule. Uh, so all the things that we'll see in this video, they, uh, they won't concern these verbs okay so i've been well choosing a verb acheter quite useful it means to buy uh, and as you can see it's a t a r so first group but then we'll see that for the indicative present tense future simple conditionnel present and then subjonctif present uh, it will be slightly different okay for all the other tenses actually you just respect the rule that we saw um, well concerning the construction of the conjugation uh, for uh, so all the other tenses I mean it will follow the rule okay so now we'll see the present form and then it goes like j'achète tu achètes il achète nous achetons vous achetez ils achètent and so you can see that the only modifications that, or modification we, we will have to do, uh, will be to put an accent, accent grave, on the top of this E uh, here, okay? And it will concern only je, tu, il, and then il at the plural form, okay? For nous and vous, actually, you don't change, and you just respect the rule, or the, the, yeah, the rule that we saw concerning the construction of the present tense for the first group of verbs, so ending with a r, okay? But then rem remember that you get to put it and then you will have to pronounce it, so it goes like j'achète, 
tu achètes, il achète, and then here, ils achètent. Ok? After that, nous achetons, vous achetez. Remember this uh, here is uh, silent or mute. Ok? So, for the future simple, j'achèterai, tu achèteras, il achètera, nous achèterons, vous achèterez. Ils achèteront. So here you can see that all the forms will be concerned and affected or modified. Okay, so it's the same rule. So you will put this accent grave here and then you will change the pronunciation. So you will get this E. Achèterait, achètera, achètera, achèteront, achèterait, achèteront. Okay. For talking about le conditionnel présent, it will be well the same. J'achèterai, tu achèterais, il achèterait, nous achèterions, vous achèteriez, ils achèteraient. Ok? So, same thing, accent grave, here, and then it will affect all the forms. J'achèterai, tu achèterais, il achèterait, nous achèterions, vous achèteriez, ils achèteraient. Ok? And last but not least, let's see, le subjonctif présent. Que j'achète, que tu achètes, qu'il achète, que nous achetions, que vous achetiez, qu'ils achètent. Ok? And then, same thing, accent grave, and it will concern je, tu, il, elle, and then il, elle at the plural form. For nous and vous, you don't change it. Ok? Que j'achète, que tu achètes, qu'il achète, and then plural form, qu'ils achètent. Okay, well that's it. So remember that for this E, T, E, R, you will have to modify at the indicative present, at the future simple, at the conditional present, and subjunctive present for all the other tenses. The verb will behave like a normal E, R verb. Les conjugaisons irrégulières, and we'll see especially, well the verbs that will be uh, constructed uh, based on jeter, okay, so you get jeter and then well verbs like déjeter, interjeter, projeter, rejeter, surjeter, so they are from the same family and we're talking about this jeter, so that's the reason why we will see the example of jeter, so jeter actually, uh, jeter quelque chose to throw something or then to pitch something, it could be a ball or it could be a, a stone, whatever, um, but then we'll see that actually the following tenses will be affected by these changes. So we're talking about indicatif présent, futur simple, conditionnel présent, and then subjonctif présent. So it does mean that for all the other tenses, we'll actually jeter, will follow the rule. So the rule from uh, from the, the first group of uh, verbs, so uh, air, okay. But then for these tenses, we'll see that we'll be, we will have little changes. And we'll see right away what all these changes for the present form and uh, it goes like je jette tu jettes il jette nous jetons vous jetez and then il jette so what we can see here is that je tu il and il will be affected by these changes and well the the only change that you, you will have to make is that you will have to double the T here. T, okay, normally you should have only one and then you will double it. And by putting two T like that, then it will open the sound of this E, so you will get jette, okay. Je jette, tu jettes, il jette, and then here you don't touch it, jetons, vous jetez, okay, and then back to the change, il jette. All right, so you double this letter T here, okay? And then let's see now for the future simple. Je jetterai, tu jetteras, il jettera, nous jetterons, vous jetterez, ils jetteront. So we can see that here this uh, modification will affect all the forms, okay? And it's, well, exactly the same modification as we, do, we did previously for the present form. So you double this letter. Jetterai, jettera, jettera, jetteront, jetterai, jetteront. And then for the conditional present form, je jetterai, tu jetterais, il jetterait, nous jetterions, vous jetteriez, il jetterait.
okay so exactly the same modification and it will affect as for the future it will affect all the persons so you double your d here okay and you get je jetterai tu jetterai il jetterai nous jetterions vous jetteriez il jetterait okay and let's see now how the subjunctive present will be affected que je jette que tu jettes qu'il jette que nous jetions que vous jetiez and then qu'il jette so what can we see here we can see that je tu il and then il will be affected because you will have to as we did previously double this letter okay but then nous and vous actually you don't touch them you just follow the rule of constructing uh, construction of the subjunctive present for the verbs uh, from the first group okay so que je jette que tu jettes qu'il jette que nous jetions que vous jetiez and then qu'il jette and that's it so keep in mind that for all the verbs that will belong to this jeté family then Indicatif présent, futur simple, conditionnel présent, then subjonctif présent will have, I mean, the little changes that we saw, okay, for all the other tenses, well, no modifications, just follow the rules that we saw previously.